If you guys are looking to create a rental website to either rent out your properties, hotels, or even equipment, today in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to do that. And in case you guys are new here, what's up guys? My name is Daryl Wilson. Today in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create a rental website or even an Airbnb rental website with WordPress. So after this video, you guys will have your own personal rental websites. Now I understand the term rental website is a little broad, right? So let me explain what kind of website you can make in this WordPress tutorial. Number one, an Airbnb rental website. With this website, visitors can come to your website and list their own properties online. You can also create categories for them, amenities, and any custom fields for your visitors. With this website, you can charge your visitors to pay per listing or even offer memberships, and I'll walk you through how to monetize your website later in the video. Number two, an equipment booking website. If you have specific equipment or items you want to rent out, either by the hour or by the daily basis, this tutorial would also work for you. With this WordPress theme, you can rent out items and charge an hourly rate or even a daily rate. Number three, vacation rentals. If you have vacation rentals and want to rent them out, you can also use this tutorial. A good example would be something like villas in Cancun, Mexico, or any properties that you might want to rent out. Number four, a single property rental. If you're a single homeowner or a person who wants to rent out maybe one or two properties, you can also use this tutorial. Sending them to your website to register is much more convenient and easier than hiring a company where they're gonna take a commission. With this website, you'll make 100% of the profit. What's even better is this WordPress theme offers more than 30 demos. You can test out various demos to help give you inspiration to build out your rental websites. You can also fully translate the website to any language and it also supports RTL languages for languages that write from right to left. And to top it off, we are using a free drag and drop page builder. So you don't need to have any knowledge of coding or any experience whatsoever. You can be a complete beginner and build out your rental websites. Okay, so let me give you guys a one to two minute overview about this website and show you what we're gonna make today in this video. Okay, so here's the rental website that I'll be showing you guys how to make today in this video. So right away we have this landing page where it tells people to book their vacation. We've also integrated Google Maps. So right here you'll see that if I enter in an address, Google Maps will automatically propagate some addresses. So for example, I'll put in like California and then it'll propagate, you know, addresses or put Las Vegas, right? And then it'll propagate all the neighborhoods in that specific area. Right here, you just can always check in and check out so they can pick their check in and check out dates and then also select the number of guests right here. Next, we'll go ahead and scroll down. So here is a list of some of our properties and we've just featured them on the front of the page. So you just can go ahead and scroll through the images. We actually have the banners like for rents, you know, you can put for rents or if you're selling property, you can put for sale or for auction. And then here are the featured listings. So the featured listings come out the top right here. And then here are just some other listings right here that people can check out. And they can also click on the favorites and add these to the favorite for them to view later. Go ahead and keep scrolling down right here. Here we have another property where we just added in this elements where it, you know, it puts the property on a full width style to make it more glamorous. And right here they can click on discover more and then go directly to that property. Here we have just like an upsell banner where it tells people to register on our websites where they can make money with their home. Next, we just have this listing section where it just tells people about, you know, they can register for free, they can add their listing or they can upload their images and so on and so forth. Here we have some testimonials where you can have users submit their testimonials on your websites and you can showcase those on your front page. Scrolling down here, we just have a little blog section where you can blog about traveling and other things to encourage people to rent out properties. And then at the bottom, we have our footer where people can even change their currency to other currencies. We have our contact info, featured listings, and then also just some upsell images. So let's go ahead and scroll to the top. Now, before we search, there's also other various styling options where you can create a search like this, where people can actually search for a specific vehicle and check in and check out with the vehicle. And they can also select between adults, children, or infants. Also for like rentals for like equipments, here we have like people can search by keyword and they can also pick between category and even a specific brand. Next, we have this upsell here to rent out a specific property and here they can just make a reservation really quick, right? They can enter in where they want to go. They can select the check-in and check-out dates and then select the number of guests right here. 
So for this demo, you'll see that this is a resort, right? So people can actually check in and check out. But the cool part is you'll see there's a price over the actual dates to let them know how expensive it is. So I'll just put the 17th to the 21st. For the guests, we can select adults, children's, or infants. I'll just put one adults. And when they select the number of guests, you can also offer upsells. So we can offer breakfast, and then we can also offer uh, deposits and service fees when they book. Now for instant booking, as soon as they click on instant booking, it'll actually take them directly to checkout. And the last one is this other vacation rental where you can actually just select by the dates and then click on find villa. And then it'll showcase the properties available for those specific villas. So as you can tell, there's a lot of flexibility you guys can use with this WordPress theme. Now, for example, if you guys do wanna have user search, users will go over here and type something in. Now we've integrated the Google Maps API. So the cool part about this theme is that it'll actually start propagating addresses. So for example, if I put in like Las Vegas, it'll start to pull up the strip and other various areas around Las Vegas. I'll go ahead and just put United States for now. Here, I will put a check-in and check-out dates. And for the number of guests, I'll go ahead and select one, and then I'll click on search. Okay, and right away, we have four results found. And if I hover over it, it'll show where it is on the map. And then over here, we have this other one. And then right here, we have this Chick Hole Valley house. And then we have this cozy house in uh, Sunnyside. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on a property. So here is the styling page for your websites. And you'll see it's a really nice styling page and you can click on see all photos and users can actually go ahead and view the gallery right here and check out all the photos for the listing. And I'll go ahead and scroll down the page. And here we have the name of the property. We have the reviews. Here people can book by the day. You'll see it's $40 per day. It shows the cleaning fee, the city fee. Here we have some description. We have a YouTube video. We have the price details. So we have a little bit more pictures. We have a second video. We have some description about the actual property. We have our listing details. And we also have the features of the property. So if it has like a pool table or something else, you can go ahead and showcase those. And then here we have things that people cannot do, like there's no smoking, no parties, no pets, and no children. And then here we have the availability where it'll show the available dates and then also the past bookings. Right here, we have a review about the property and then also the owner of the actual property. And below that, we have the map again, just to showcase where it appears on the actual map. On the right side, you'll see we have these little upsells, like we have these other options for other listings, and then people can book right away on your websites. Now, one thing also to note is there's various styling options for this specific page. So right here, we're using styling option four but we can pick between other styling options. So for example, I'll pick five and refresh the page. And then you'll see right here how it changes to this style where the images are a little uh, space out from one another. And we can go ahead and choose between another style right here, like style one, and then refresh the page. And then you'll see it presents the photos right here with the booking on the right side for them to scroll while they're actually viewing the description. So you guys do have a lot of flexibility with this theme and there are tons of styling options for the search page and also the listing page. Also, users will all have their own personal custom dashboard. Over here, I'll click on my profile. So right away, the users will have their own personal custom dashboard. You can see on the left side that we have listings and then we also have our subscription. So right now we're actually paying for a subscription on this website. Right here, I'll click on my subscription. So here's the memberships page where users can actually pick their package. So we have six different packages and users can actually pick the package. They can pay with PayPal or Stripe and also make this recurring. And all they gotta do is click on subscribe and then they can enter in their credit cards from their backend and this makes it a really convenient way for users to pay you on your website without you having to intervene or do anything. Next, let's go ahead and click on listings. So here is a list of all the listings right here and the users can actually trash this, they can edit it, they can view it, and they can also pay for listings right here on the back end. So you'll see there's tons of listings, they'll see their reviews, the price, and all the information for their listings will be displayed right here. And then lastly, in the booking section, there's two different types of bookings. There are bookings where people have actually paid for your property. And then there is your own booking where you have personally booked something and people can manage their own booking directly on the back end. There's a lot more options and a lot more monetization options. And I'll cover all of this later in the video. Also, every vendor will be able to add in their own listings by themselves. So you'll see right here, they have the description, the price, the images, details, location, amenities, and calendar. 
And then below that, all they gotta do is fill out this information right here. And you can make specific sections mandatory so that you'll force the vendors to put in all the information about their property. It's a very automated process. So later in this video, I'll be showing you how to let users post on your website automatically. So this is going to be a very comprehensive tutorial on how to create a rental website. And if you guys watch all the way, you guys will have a fully functional rental website where users can post listings and also use credit cards directly on your websites. Now we're gonna build this rental website in five simple steps. In step one, we'll get domain and hosting. A domain is the name of your website, like mycoolpropertyrentalwebsite.com, and web hosting will host your website online 24 hours a day. We also do have an exclusive hosting discount for you that you won't find anywhere else on any other YouTube channel. In step two, we'll create listings. After we import the WordPress theme, I'll then be showing you how to create listings and also create custom fields for your listings. This gives your visitors a lot more flexibility to add as much information as they want for their rental property. In step three, we'll design the websites. In step three, I'll be showing you guys how to design the website using the drag and draw page builder. It's completely free and doesn't require any knowledge of coding whatsoever. Plus, it's really simple to use. In step four, the theme options. In step four, I'll be showing you how to use the theme options. The theme options will display various styling options throughout your website. You can pick between various headers and also pick between different search results pages. In step five, monetization. In step five, I'll be showing you how to fully monetize your website. With this website, users can come to your website and use their own credit card and pay you directly on your websites. So let's get started. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to step one and that's to purchase fast web hosting. And this is Hostinger.com. Now Hostinger.com is among the fastest and also the cheapest web hosting available. Right now they're having their Black Friday sale, but I have a discount code that's even better than their Black Friday sale. So even after watching this, you guys still will receive the maximum discount code available. And you guys also do get a free domain. Now, once you guys are here, if you guys do wanna adjust the language here on the top, you guys can change this to any language that you want. So you can change it to Spanish or German or Portuguese or Japanese or whatever you want, right? So you guys can go ahead and select your language. But once you guys are here at the top, you guys will see WordPress. Go ahead and click on WordPress. Now, once you guys click on it, you'll click on claim the deal, or you can just scroll down. And here we have three different plans. We have the premium, the business, and the cloud startup. Now, I personally recommend the business because this actually gives you increased performance and it also gives you access to NVMe storage, which is a lot faster than SSD storage. So once you guys are here under the business plan, we'll click on add to cart. So next we're brought to our checkout page. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. And here we have to select a period. So you can select 12 months, 24 months, or 48 months. I personally recommend the 12 months. This will give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. You guys also do get the largest discount available. You guys get a free domain name and you guys also get a 30 day money back guarantee. So once you guys select your period, we'll then scroll down here. You guys will go ahead and create an account. So you'll put your email and your password your Google account or Facebook or whatever it is you guys want to use, you guys can create an account right here. And below that, we'll select our payments. So you guys can pay with credit card, PayPal, and even cryptocurrency, how about that? Now, what I want you guys to do is right here under the coupon code, I have a larger discount code available than their current Black Friday sale. So right here under have a coupon code, if you guys enter the coupon code Daryl10, you guys will receive, I think it's like 70 something percent off here. We'll go ahead and type it in here. Daryl 10, and I'll click on apply. So it went from $53 to $48, and that gives you a maximum of 71% off the hosting package. So the next thing you guys will do is go ahead and enter in your credit card information. And once you guys enter in all your information on this page, I will go ahead and meet you on the very next page. All right, so once you guys make your payment, it'll then bring you to this little wizard. So right here, I'll click on start now. So next they're asking us, who are we creating the website for? But I do wanna skip this wizard. So right here at the bottom, I'll click on skip. I don't want personalized experience. The next option is create or migrate a website. So right here under create a website, we'll click on the select button. Next they're asking us to select a platform, but I do wanna skip this because I don't want to propagate all of this stuff. I want a fresh, clean slate of WordPress. So at the bottom right here, you'll click on skip. I will start from scratch. Next, we have the free domain. So under claim a free domain name, we'll click on select. And then you'll type in your desired domain. So whatever domain that you want for your website, you'll go ahead and type it right here. 
So my domain is available, darylwilsontutorial.com. So right here, I'll click on continue. So next they're gonna ask you for some details. So right here, you'll put the country, you'll put if this is personal or company. And next I'll click on next step. So next we're gonna enter in our contact details. This is where you're going to enter the details to claim ownership for your domain. This is important if you guys ever want to sell your domain or if you ever want to claim ownership, you guys will need to enter in your contact details so that your information can be verified. So go ahead and fill out your information here. All right, so once you guys are done, you'll then click on finish registration. So next they selected a server for us that gives us the best performance available. So next I'll click on finish setup. Okay, awesome. So now our website is ready. Now we can either view the website or go to the control panel. But right here, let's go to the control panel first. So right here, click on manage site. So here is the hosting or dashboard and this is where you can get all the information about your websites. So here you guys can see that our plan is active. We have our domain. You guys can also set up free emails with Hostinger. Pretty cool, right? And then also you can see your performance score. On the left side, you have different tabs, right? So you have hosting, you have performance, security, and this is where you can get more information about your hosting package. So here you have your name servers, you have the hosting details, and then you also have these server details here available. Resources usage, this lets you know how much you're using on your website, right? So right here, I'll click on performance and then go to page speed. So you guys can also analyze your websites by going over here and clicking on analyze. Once you guys do that, it's going to analyze your website's performance. This takes probably like, I don't know, five seconds. And here you guys can see that our website has a 97% page speed score on the page speed insights. Of course, you know, there's nothing on the website yet, so it's gonna be very fast. And the more you add to it, the slower it may get. But we'll walk you guys through all that in the video. So next we have the analytics, which shows you the top countries visiting your website and also some errors. If you guys do have any errors, they'll all be displayed right here. It also shows your total requests as well. Next, we'll click on the security and click on malware scanner. If you guys ever suspect there's something on your website, like a virus or something, you guys can always check the malware scanner and they'll notify you if your website has any viruses on your websites. And next we have the SSL. Now, Hostinger actually automatically installs the SSL on all websites they propagate. And SSL is this little cool uh, padlock up here that gives you the connection secure. There was an update a few years ago that Google required all websites to have it, and now Hostinger gives it to all the websites by default. If you guys do need any help with your website, they do also offer a little chat box here where you guys can go ahead and um, you know ask them a question. And if you guys do have problems with your website, you guys can go ahead and go through the form right here. And there are support agents that can help you with any problems you guys have on your websites. So that is pretty much it for the support and the interface. Now, before we build our website, we do need to verify our domain. So the domain that we actually purchased, we need to verify that in our email inbox. If you guys don't, after two weeks, the website will disappear. So make sure that you guys um, verify it. You guys can do this by going to your email right here and you'll see that you have an email from Hostinger. This right here says important, verify your contact info. I'll go ahead and click on this email and you'll need to click on this link right here. This will go ahead and validate and verify that you own the domain. So I'll click on the link and then you'll see that the email address has been successfully verified. Pretty cool. You guys will also need to do the same thing for your hosting your account. So right here, verify your email address. Then I'll click on verify email. So after you guys verify your account, it'll ask you for two-way authentication, but I'm gonna skip that for now. So I'll click on cancel. So now let's go to WordPress. Right here under hosting, we'll click on manage. So next, let's install WordPress on our domain. WordPress pretty much allows us to build our website with drag and drop builders and make it really easy to build our website. We're gonna scroll down right here and click on websites. And then we're gonna click on auto installer. Here you're gonna see that we have WordPress available. So I'll click on WordPress. And here we're just gonna give our website a name. You guys can always change this later. Don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal, but I'll put my new cool websites. Here we have the email and then we have the username and then also a password. Make sure that you guys write these credentials down because you guys will need this in order to log in and log out of your WordPress websites. Once you guys enter in your credentials, you'll then click on next. Here they're just telling you they're gonna install WordPress. So right here, let's click on install. All right, cool. So now Hostinger has installed WordPress on our domain. Right here under admin panel, you guys can click on this to log into your WordPress websites. So let's click on admin panel. 
Okay, so now we are logged into WordPress. This is their setup wizard, but I'm gonna skip it. I never liked any of the setup wizards, to be honest. Uh, here, we'll click on dashboard. So this is your WordPress dashboard, and this is where all the magic happens. Now, if you guys wanna see what your website looks like right now, here at the top, I'll click on visit sites. And this is our new website. Pretty cool, you know, they entered in some just basic demo content for us, you know, I guess just to help us get started, but uh, we're gonna delete all this and we're not gonna use any of it, but it is still nice they gave us something to work with. So let's go back over here to dashboard. So before going any further, now let's adjust the general settings. So over here under users, let's click on profile. Now you guys can actually change the color scheme of the back end of your website if you want blue or ocean or midnight. I like midnight the most because it's really easy on the eye to see what you're doing, right? Now we're gonna scroll down right here and this is where you guys can also update your email. This is where your credentials will be sent to in case you guys do forget your password for WordPress. They'll be sent to this email right here. So make sure that you guys do have access to it. We'll go ahead and scroll down. Here you guys can make a new WordPress password. So if you guys do want to change your password, you guys can do that right here. And then once we're done with that, we'll click on update profile. Next, we're going to go over here to settings and click on general. Here, you guys can go ahead and also update the email if you guys want to do that. And if you guys do speak any other various languages, right here under site language, you guys can change this to any language you want. I mean, they have tons of languages you guys can use right here. So you guys can select Spanish or German or French or any language that you guys want. Once you guys do select that, we'll scroll to the bottom and click on save changes. The next thing we're gonna do is update our permalinks. So right here, I'll click on permalinks. So here we have the permalink structure and you always wanna set this to post name. The reason why you do this is because you want your website to say, you know, mycoolwebsite.com slash about us, right? Or slash contact us, not all these random numbers and letters and it doesn't make any sense. Post name is actually optimal for SEO. So go ahead and select post name, scroll to the bottom and then click on save changes. All right, now let's go ahead and click on our dashboard. Now let me show you guys how to log in and log out of your WordPress websites. So right here, I'm gonna log out. So I'll click on log out and I'll go ahead and just visit our websites. And as you guys can see, it brings us to our websites. But as you guys notice, there's no way for me to log into the websites. If you guys do wanna log into your websites, all you gotta do is go to your website, type in dash WP dash admin and press enter. This will bring you to the login screen where you guys can log in with your WordPress credentials. So you'll enter in your WordPress credentials here. I'll click on remember me so I don't have to keep logging in. Then I'll click on login. All right, cool. So that's how you guys can log in and log out of WordPress from any location. All right, awesome. Congrats on getting your website up and running. Now in this next section, I'll be showing you guys how to import the WordPress theme and then import the demo content. Then I'll be showing you guys how to create listings using this WordPress theme. Now there is a one-time fee with this WordPress theme. It's like 69 bucks and there is no subscriptions. There is no monthly payments. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access. So I'll be showing you guys how to create listings using this WordPress theme in this next section of the video. You guys ready? Let's go. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is that we are now going to download and purchase a premium WordPress theme to build out our rental websites. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase, y'all ready? WP Rentals. WP Rentals is the number one best-selling booking accommodation theme for WordPress. There are various types of websites you can make using this WordPress theme. And just to give you guys some examples, I have opened up some other demo websites. This one right here is actually renting out office space. So if you guys want to rent out, you know, office space or conference rooms, you guys can do that. You can rent things by the hour, by the day, by the week, or by the month, whatever you guys want. Also equipment rental website as well. Here you'll see that they are, I think they're renting out equipment gear, right? So they have snowboards, right? And this is actually very popular in Mammoth Mountain and those, um, you know, those places where they, you know, uh, rent out equipment. You guys can use this specific theme. Also, you guys can change the currency here at the top left. Also, here's another example. You guys can actually rent out uh, yachts. So if you guys want to rent out boats or yachts, they also have uh, a demo for that. Now, if you guys just want to rent out something basic like a villa, you'll see here that people can actually rent out their own villas or their own property using this WordPress theme. And then also a standard Airbnb demo where you guys can rent out various properties. And you can also invite users 
to post and submit their own listings so that you guys can virtually create your own Airbnb style websites. And it's really clean. You know, you'll see here that uh, the actual property shows up. When users scroll, the properties change and we can click on it to get more information. You guys can also fully adjust this page and we'll talk more about that in the theme options section of this video. So let's go ahead and go back to the WordPress theme. So now that you guys have an idea of what this can do, let's go ahead and purchase it. So this theme costs $69 and this is a one-time payment for lifetime access. There is no subscriptions, thank God, so you don't have to worry about paying monthly. You just pay one time and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and click on add to cart, go to checkout. Now what you guys are gonna do is that you guys are going to go ahead and purchase this. And once you guys do purchase this, I will meet you in the customer portal. Okay, so this is my customer portal and right here, I'll click on downloads. And you'll see right here, I have purchased WP Rentals. I mean, you guys are gonna see, I've purchased literally almost every theme from ThemeForest because I vigorously test a lot of these WordPress themes to find out which one's garbage and which one's good. And after spending about $500, I basically came up with the best theme and that was the WP Rentals. So what we're gonna do is that we are now going to download this and then upload it to our website. So right here under download, go ahead and click on Ensemble WordPress file only. You'll also need your purchase code to so make sure that you guys do download the WordPress file and also the purchase code. Once you guys download it, we're now going to upload it to our websites. So over here, we're gonna to go to appearance and then click on themes. And we're now going to upload that WordPress theme. Up here, I'll click on add new theme. And then I'll click on upload theme. And then right here, I'll click on browse. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this file. You'll see that this is the file right here. It is a zip file, right? So I'll go ahead and click on open and then click on install now. All right, and once we upload that, we'll then click on activate. All right, cool. So we have successfully activated the theme. You guys can close these annoying notices. Don't worry, we're gonna go ahead and adjust this and you know, we'll, 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 we'll get there, don't worry. So now that we installed the actual theme, if you guys wanna take a look at your website now, here at the top left under visit sites, you guys will see the website has changed a little bit, right? So it's, you know, we're getting there, you know, we're getting warm. So let's go back to our dashboard. Now, you're gonna see this notice right here that actually wants you to install plugins, and this is what we have to do next. If this does not show for you guys, you can access this by going over here to appearance and clicking on install plugins. It'll bring you to the same page. Now, we're gonna click on this check here, but we don't want to install this one here. We don't want the visual composer, so we're gonna uncheck that. And we also do not want the WP Bakery visual composer either. We also do not want WP Rentals, because we're not gonna be using these page builders. We also don't need Revolution Slider. This is a premium plugin that's very complex. So we just wanna make sure that the core plugins are installed, the Envato Markets, and then also the one-click demo imports. Once you guys have these five plugins uh, checked, we'll then click on Install, and then click on Apply. This should just take like, I don't know, 10 seconds. Okay, so once those have installed, we'll then click on Return to a Card Plugins. And now we're gonna activate them. So we're gonna click on the same ones, right? Those first five. And then I'll click on activate and apply. All right, cool. So we installed those plugins. And if I refresh this page, let's see if we'll get any notices. Sometimes notices pop up from the plugins that we installed. Go ahead and refresh the page. Okay, we did get a notice from Elementor. So I just wanna go ahead and close this one. At the top right, I'll click on the close. So now that we installed those plugins, we now need to add in our license code in order to import the demo content. You'll see right here how it's saying we need to enter the purchase code. You guys can find the purchase code again by going over here and clicking on the folder. And then up here, I'll click on the text. And here is the purchase code, okay? So I'll go ahead and copy this purchase code. And then we'll go back to our websites and then we'll just paste it in there. Now you need to enter in also your theme forest ID. So you'll see mine is Daryl 03, right? So whatever your username is, you'll also go ahead and enter it right here. So I'll put in Daryl 03 and then I'll enter my purchase code. I consent and then click on register license. Once you guys do that, it'll then say that you have successfully registered your WordPress theme. Now we can refresh the page to get rid of that notice. Okay, and also we'll dismiss this notice here as well. We don't really need it. 
Now, really quickly, if we scroll down right here, you guys will see they have this really cool little banner right here where we can, uh, you know, take a look at stuff. But yeah, you know, I just thought it's nice, but we don't really need it, right? So it's just something that they added, you know, pretty cool. Over here under WP Rentals Options, we're gonna go over here and then click on Import Demo. And now we're gonna import some of the demo content. All right, so next let's go ahead and scroll down. And here you guys are gonna see various demos. So we have the main demo, the Popos demo, and all these other various demos that you guys can use on your websites. Uh, up here, you'll see that there is this Popos demo. It's actually quite funny. This is actually using the same design from Airbnb. So this is the actual demo, and here is Airbnb. I know it's written in Thai, and that's just because I'm currently in Thailand, but you'll see that the design is almost identical, right? So that's actually pretty cool. But the demo that we're gonna use is the main demo. If you guys do like these other demos, that's fine. I'll show you guys how to import those later. But to make sure that we all get started on the same page, I want you guys to import the main demo. So right here, you'll see import demo. Let's click on import demo. Now these are other various plugins you guys can install on your websites. In fact, I have tutorials on all of these if you guys are interested. But for now, let's just go ahead and click on continue and import. And this is gonna import the demo websites. So just give this about two to three minutes and it'll import all the demo content on your websites. All right, cool. So you guys will see the import has completed. Now you guys might see right here that WordPress has not imported these images. And that's just because these are SVG images and WordPress thinks that they're not safe. So no worries, we can always import our own images later. So we'll just scroll down here and then we'll click on visit sites. And let's take a look at our new website. And voila, we now have this beautiful website. And we'll keep scrolling down here. You'll see that we have all of our demos, right? We have these you know, demo properties and this looks great, right? People here can add it to the favorites, they can like it. And I mean, for your first websites, I'll be very honest, it's amazing. Here we have these placeholders where we can introduce our own images for you know, this section. Here we have our featured properties. If you guys wanna you know, make something featured, we have some more here at the bottom. We have amenities, best places to rent, and we can just insert our own images, right? Our own cities or whatever. And we'll keep scrolling down here. We have verified owners. So if you guys do wanna showcase owners on your website, you guys can do that. So we can just you know, insert, a, you know, insert a, um, an image right here and a new person and then update that. So we have various owners. And then here you guys can, you know, encourage people by saying earn up to $1,000 a month, you know, hosting your website with us. People can go ahead and list their own space right here. And here we have some testimonials from people who love the website and so on and so forth. So as you guys can tell, you know, everything imported successfully and it's just waiting for us to replace this content with our own content, right? Here at the bottom right, I'll click on scroll to the top and that's it. So we have successfully imported the demo. Let's first go ahead and go back to the dashboard. Okay, so before we go any further, let's take a step back here and explore some options. Now, the first thing I want you guys to do is over here under Elementor, I want you guys to click on settings. Now over here under features, let's click on features. Okay, and we're gonna scroll down. And what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to disable the Flexbox container. So under stable features, you're gonna see that there's all these other features they have. So for the Flexbox, I want you guys to make this inactive and then I'll click on deactivate. The reason why is the Flexbox is actually a little confusing for a lot of first time users. And I found that most beginners don't like Flexbox because it is somewhat confusing. And then I'll scroll to the bottom and click on save changes. The next thing I wanna do is go over here to general and I wanna make sure that posts, pages and listings are checked. And then also click on save changes. Okay, so now that we adjusted those options, now let's first talk about owners. So on the left side, you're gonna see owners. Let's click on owners. Now owners are people who can list properties on your websites. These users can register on your website themselves. However, we can always create our own owner from scratch if we need to do so. So up here, I'll click on add a new owner. And let's just imagine that I'm a new owner, right? Or I'm making a profile for a new owner. So I'll put Daryl Wilson. And hey, this is Daryl, you know, I am a property manager and I'm cool, right? Or whatever you wanna say about Daryl Wilson. Now here, we can select a featured image for Daryl Wilson. So this is the image that's going to represent the owner. So over here, media. And I'll just go ahead and select this guy here, all right? Set featured image. 
I don't want to allow comments. You know, there's no reason for me to allow comments. And then here we have the owner details. Now, the most important one is probably the email and the phone number. These other ones you don't have to enter. So I'll go ahead and enter an email here. Okay, so I went ahead and enter an email and phone number. There's also these other options like their social profiles. You can put something like I live in Chatsworth. I speak English. Here I speak English, Spanish, Thai. And then over here, you guys can add in any other information. These options right here are not relevant to us, so we can just skip this for now. However, I don't wanna add a sidebar, so over here, I'm gonna select none, right? And I'll scroll up and click on publish. Then I'll click on view owner. And here is the profile for Daryl Wilson. You'll see Daryl Wilson, we have our information, the location, language is spoken, and then their contact info. Okay, now there is a little misconception here with owners and users. So I recommend to just let users register on your websites because that'll actually create an owner and it'll also create a user for that owner. If you guys actually just create your own owner manually, what happens is it doesn't create a user profile for that person. So that person really can't do much on your website. So just to reiterate here, I recommend to let users just register on your website because that'll create a member and also a user for that same person. Okay, so I don't recommend to create owners from scratch because there is no user profile that will link them together. Sorry if that's a little confusing, but that's just how the theme was developed. So let users register on your websites and uh, yeah. If you guys do still have questions about owners versus users, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to clarify it for you guys. And with that said, let's go ahead and jump back to the video. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do, we're now gonna create categories, amenities, and also neighborhoods and attributes for our listings. Over here, if I hover over listings, you're gonna see that there's all these different categories, right? But first, let's just click on listings. So this is all of the demo content that has been imported on your website. You'll see that here is the title of the property. We have the type of property, the category, and then also the user. You guys can just go ahead and click on these just to get an idea. So right here, I'll click on view. And this is just demo content, right? So keep that in mind. So here you'll see that there's an image here, an image here, and of course we can add in more images in order to fill this. So this is just like, you know, half of it because they didn't add in enough images to fill out all of the space. But we'll do that in the very next section. So here you'll see the name of the property, right? We have the attributes, we have the description of the property, people can book. Here they can actually check in, right? And what's really cool is that it actually shows the price here, right? Here we have the guests, and it even displays the price when they select the dates. We'll go ahead and scroll down. Here you guys are gonna see that there's pricing details, listing details, and also other features, terms and conditions, and so on and so forth. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and create all of the features. We're gonna create the information for users to post on our websites. So let's go back to our dashboard. So up here, I'll go to dashboard. And over here under listings, you're gonna see that we can add a new listing, but there's also this information we need to fill out. So first, let's just go ahead and tackle each one one by one before we introduce you guys to listings and the page builder. So right here, let's first click on categories. Now, where do these show up? Well, these are gonna show up when users actually fill out information on your websites. They will also propagate when you actually try to create a new listing. Let me show you guys. Okay, so let's just imagine I'm a user for the very first time and I wanna submit a property. On the top right, I'll click on Submit Property. So here you guys are gonna see that it has some steps in order for the user to fill out before they list the property. So right here, you'll see the title, right? But here we have categories, right? And the categories is what users are going to select. So you'll see apartments, cabin condos, and so on and so forth. They also have other information right here, like what type of place is this? The entire home, the room, and so on and so forth. So what we're gonna do right now is that we're going to go ahead and create the categories and listings for users to submit properties on your website. So for the name right here, I'm gonna enter in room for rent, right? Cause a lot of people do actually rent out their rooms cause apartments are getting so expensive and so are houses. So room for rents are becoming a very common thing. So I'll scroll to the bottom right here and I'll add a new listing category. So we have room for rents, apartments. I'm gonna get rid of the B&B. &B. I don't think, I don't even know what that is, right? We have cabin, condos, dorms, right? I guess you can rent out dorms, but that's for universities. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. So uh, yeah, we have these ones right here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Now, the categories are gonna be basically what you guys are trying to offer, right? So if you guys are renting out hotels, you can put the name of the suites right here. If you guys are offering equipment, you can put the categories of the equipment. If you guys are just renting out standard homes, you can just put house, room for rent, and just apartment, right? You don't have to do all of these, these are optional, but the categories are important because this is basically what you guys are offering on your website. So this might take a little time to think about, right? So on your own free time, really research what you're offering on your website, create the categories, and then we'll go from there. All right, so here are the categories, right? Now the next one is what do you rent? So right here, I'll click on what do you rent? Essentially, this is a subcategory of your main categories. Just to give you guys an example, over here you'll see categories and listed type of rooms. So here we have house, villa, condos, and over here you'll see that they can rent the entire home, the private room, or a shared room. Now this is optional, you guys do not have to add this if you guys don't want to, but it just makes your listings a little bit more accurate for users who want to maybe rent out specific parts of their house, but not necessarily the entire house, right? So essentially, the what do you rent are subcategories of the main category, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is go over here and click on city. Now, where are you going to offer these services? Right here, you guys can put in the city, right? So we have Baltimore, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Washington. I'll go ahead and put in Los Angeles, right? And then I'll go ahead and click on add a new city. Now we can also enter in subcategories for these categories. For example, Los Angeles is a little large, right? Over here under the city, I'll put in Santa Clarita, right? Santa Clarita is a smaller area within Los Angeles. So over here, I'll go ahead and then select Los Angeles and then I'll click on add a new city. Now you'll see here how there's this little dash. So essentially what I'm saying here is that Santa Clarita is a subcategory of Los Angeles, right? And we can do also like, you know, San Fernando Valley, San Fernando Valley, right? And I'll also, you know, add that to a new city, right? So essentially what we're doing here is we are now creating sub areas for our main city. You guys can actually do this for every single category, right? So if you guys do want to enter in something else right here, you guys can enter in, you know, a subcategory. For example, we can type in like back house here and then apply this to like the entire home, right? So essentially what I'm saying here is like, yeah, you can rent the back house in the entire home, right? So you guys can always create subcategories for all of your categories if you choose to do so, right? But uh, let's go back over here to city. So now that I've entered that in, now let's go ahead and go to the next section of neighborhood area. Now the next is neighborhood area. Now earlier I showed you guys about the city, about how you can create subcategories for your city. You guys can also do that here as well. It basically produces the same results. So for example, let's say I want to enter in a city within Los Angeles, right? I'll type in Lancaster, okay? And then for the which city has this area, I'll go ahead and select Los Angeles. So essentially what I'm saying here is uh, Lancaster is located within Los Angeles, right? You guys can go both ways, right? You can either enter them here or you can enter them a city. Again, they produce the same exact results. So the next is the features and amenities. And essentially this is the features and amenities that you want to display for whatever property is you want to showcase. So you'll see here they have fireplace, they have internet, they have uh, pets allowed, a swimming pool, oh here it is, pool. And they have quite a bit of amenities, right? And they did a really good job at filling this out. Here I'll click on the arrow and you'll see they have even more right here, projector, TV, washer, and so on and so forth. These amenities will be displayed when users actually create properties. So when users are creating a listing, over here under the amenities section, this is where they're going to actually select the amenities, right? So hot tub, pool, non-smoking, whatever. And this is where the amenities are coming from, right? So you want to put the amenities that users can select when they're creating listings on your websites. You got that? Okay. All right, now the next thing is property status. Property status are for people who want to sell their property or rent it or auction it or whatever. So for example, I'll put for sale, a lot of new status. Here we have for rent, right? And then we have like auction, right? Or pre-auction or whatever, right? 
So these are the actual statuses of the actual property. If you guys are just renting out properties and you're not trying to run like a real estate website, there's really no use for this section. But if you guys do want to sell properties and also showcase them for rent and an auction, this is where you guys can add property status. Okay, so now that we've created all these different categories and custom post types, now let's create a listing. So over here, listings. And I'll walk you guys through how to create your own listing manually. And then I'll walk you guys through how people would actually create listings on your websites. So over here, I'll click on add a new listing. Now this is the actual name of the property, right? So this can be something like the address or it can be the name of the property that you want to rent out. Now, just to give you guys some tips, over here at airbnb.com, you'll see people list the actual property by the type of property and also the location. So room in Alhambra, a guest house, and so on and so forth, right? I don't think people actually give their rooms names, right? That wouldn't make a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and use this inspiration and apply it to our rental websites. So over here, we're gonna create a listing. So I'll put in house for rent in Santa Clarita. And then here I'll put in some just description about the actual listing. Okay, so here I entered in some description. Now this description is important because this is the information you want people to know about the actual property. So I put here, you know, what they can expect, the size of it, are their guests allowed, uh, how far it is from the city and so on and so forth. So this is where you're going to enter in information to encourage people to rent out your property, right? Now on the right side, you're gonna see categories. Now remember earlier how we showed you guys those categories and all that information? This is where they're going to display. So this is a house, right? I'll click on house. And just for tutorial's sake, I'll also put in cabin, right? I'll scroll down. What do you rent? So I'm renting out the entire home. But notice here how there's also back house because we created a subcategory for back house. So you'll see here even how it's listed under it. So you can even select, you know, the back house as well if you want to go that route, right? You guys can get very customizable with the subcategories and categories with this theme. It's virtually endless, right? Here we have discussion. You can allow comments. I don't want to allow comments. So I'm going to check that and close this box. And on the right side, you're going to see city, right? So I'm going to select Los Angeles. But within Los Angeles, I'm also gonna select Santa Clarita because that's where the actual property is physically located. I'll scroll down right here to neighborhood area. Now, I don't really use this right here, but I can if I wanted to. Remember earlier how I chose to actually use Santa Clarita for Los Angeles? Again, you guys can go either way, right? So you can even enter in Santa Clarita here as a subcategory. But I'll tell you what, over here, under a new area, we can even add in a new neighborhood area right here. So just for tutorial's sake, I'll go ahead and I'll enter in North Santa Clarita. And then I'll just select that, right? So essentially, I'm just getting in the nitty gritty and really trying to display exactly where this property is located. So on the left side, you're gonna see property details. Now this is where we can enter in more information about the general details, the property price, and also where we can upload images for our property. So the first thing is I'll enter the number of guests, right? So this is five guests, right? And then here I'll put the property address. The property county, this is in Los Angeles. And then the state is in California. The property zip. And then the country right here, right? So I'll go ahead and select Los Angeles. I'm sorry, United States. And then the country right here, I'll go ahead and look for United States, all right? And we can choose to make this featured, right? Now this is a paid option for users, but if you are creating your own properties, you can choose to make it featured from right here. The next option is affiliate link. Now, if you guys do wanna turn this website into an affiliate website, you guys can also do that. For example, if I clicked on this property and then clicked on book or something like that, it would actually take them to a whole nother property. You guys can even make replicas of Airbnb and just redirect people to these specific properties if you guys do wanna create an affiliate website for these rental properties. I find that most people would just go to Airbnb and not go to your website. So if you guys do wanna allow this, you can, but I'm going to skip affiliate links. You guys can also choose allow instant booking. So this right here is an example of the instant booking. You'll see the user can go ahead and check in, right? They can put the number of guests and here we can select breakfast, right? And then right here, 
they can just select instant booking. And what that will do is that that will actually take them to the cart where they can proceed to check out and book this right away. So it takes them right to the billing form. It's just a, essentially a faster way for users to check out on your website if you guys do wanna go that route. But I'll go ahead and uncheck instant booking, right? Now the next is the property price. So here is where you can charge people by the day or even by the hour, right? So here we have per day, per night. And I'll go ahead and say, you know what? We're gonna be charging $100, right? The next option is before label and after label. This essentially allows you to place text before the price and after the price. Just to give you guys an example, over here, you guys will see that we have starting from and then we have after discounts. If I click on view listing, you'll see right here, this is starting from and then after discounts. Now, this is just an example, but if you guys do wanna add some sort of promotional text, you guys can probably do it from right here, right? So that's just giving you guys another option if you wanna add text before or after the price. The next is the property taxes, but this is actually a depreciated option. This is if you want to display how much percentage of tax you pay for the property, which I'm not really sure why you'd wanna do that. But if you're selling the property, that might make more sense. The next is the price per night. Now you'll see here the property price is $100. However, if they book more than seven days, you guys can give them a discount. For example, if they book more than seven days, then the property will then go down to $75 a night. So let me give you guys an example of how this works. Over here, we have our demo property. You'll see here that the property is normally listed every night for $500. If they book more than seven days consecutively, then the price is dropped to $300. And we can test that by going over here and saying, all right, $500 for, you know, we have four days, right? it goes to $2,000. Now, if we were to do eight nights, it should say $4,000, but it's gonna give us a discount, right? So over here, we'll do eight nights, and you'll see that it's at a discounted rate, right? So you guys can actually charge people less if they book more days. So here is the price after seven days, and then here is the price if they book more than 30 days, right? So let's go back over here to our listing. So if they book more than seven days, right, we'll give them a rate of $75. And if they book more than 30 days, which is essentially a whole month, we can say, we'll give you guys a rate of $50. Now we can have a special prorated price. So here the price is $100. However, weekends are usually booked more than any other day. So because of that, we are gonna charge a price of $125 for the weekends. Here we have a cleaning fee. What do you guys wanna charge for a cleaning fee? Well, I'll charge $100, right? And we can charge a single fee per night or per guest. But I think most people actually just do single fee, right? I mean, I think that makes the most sense. The next is a city fee. Now, some cities will actually charge you money for running an Airbnb in your specific neighborhood. You guys might want to do some research and find out what city those are, but I'll just put 50 bucks as a single fee, right? The next is minimum days of booking. So probably just one, right? Here is a security deposit. You guys can choose to charge a security deposit if people actually book on your actual property, right? Early bird discount. You guys can actually give people a discount if they book in advance. So for example, I'll give them a $10 discount if they book 30 days in advance, right? So they need to book out at least a month ahead of time in order to receive a $10 discount on the booking. The next is the extra price per guest. So do you want to charge people more money for guests? Sure, I'll charge them another $20 for each individual guests. So the next is allow guests above capacity. Now you remember earlier how we have only five guests. If we decide to say, you know what, they're gonna pay for the guests, so let's just let them stay, right? We'll go ahead and allow them to stay because they are paying extra for each individual guest. However, we can set a maximum. So I'll say, you know what, even though we're letting you guys stay here for five guests and we'll charge you more for each individual guest, you cannot bring more than 10 no matter what. Now this next option right here is saying, you guys can actually charge a whole different rate. If you guys want to pay by only the number of guests and not the room, you guys can actually check that box right there. So you guys can mix and match saying, do you want to charge this? by guests or do you wanna charge this by the room? You can go either way. 
But I think most people just do it like this, right? Per guest, per room, not only by guests. The next is, when do you want people to book? Now, if you want to be very picky and saying, you can only book from like Monday to Friday, we can do that. Maybe you guys have something to do like remodeling on the house and you guys need the weekends off. You guys can choose to allow people to book from Monday through Friday. Or you guys can just say, you guys can book any time of the day because we can always send people there to work on the property at any time, right? Now on the right side, you're gonna see amenities. So this is where we can add in amenities, right? So I'll just throw in some amenities. And then here we have property status. So I'm gonna put for rent. And then at the way bottom, you're gonna see featured image. Now I'm gonna drag this up right here. So we should actually put this above because this is actually a very important option. So I'll go ahead and select a featured image. Now this is the image that actually represents the property. So I'm gonna select this one right here and set a featured image. Okay, so we have selected the general details, the price, and now here we have the property media. So this is where we can actually enter in the images for the property for people to actually go through, right? So we entered in the featured image, right? We got that one there, but maybe here we want to add in some other ones, right? So I'll put in this one here. So I'll go ahead and select this one here, this one here, and also this one here. Now I'm selecting different properties because I'm actually holding the shift button, right? So if you hold the shift, it'll select all the properties, but I'm sorry, all the images, but I just want to check those ones off and I'll just select these ones here for now, right? So there we go. And then I'll click on set image. So next we have the video from. Now, if you guys do wanna use a YouTube video right here, I'll select YouTube and here we can enter in the video ID. Now, all you have to do is go to YouTube, but don't copy the whole link. Just go ahead and only take this section after the equal sign. So TZ, MQ, so on and so forth. I'll take this and then I'll go over here to edit listing and then I'll paste it in there. Okay. And that's how you guys can embed the video. The next is the virtual tour. If you guys do wanna create virtual tours for your websites, there is a website called matterport.com. This website will actually create 3D models and virtual tours from your property. I'm not too knowledgeable about this industry. So if you guys do wanna check it out, I'll leave a link to this website in the description below of this video. Okay, so now that we have selected that, now let's go ahead and go to the next section, which is property specific details. So the next is the property details. So this is like the size of the actual property, right? The size of the room, how many bedrooms, and then how many bathrooms. Here we have a cancellation policy and any other rule that you guys want to let people know, like no marijuana, no heroin, no crack cocaine, you know, all that stuff, you have to put it in right here because if they do bring in illegal drugs and it's not against your policy, well, you can't blame anyone but yourself, right? So we'll just put like no crack, you know, no, no crack, <laughs> right? Uh, here we can choose if we want to allow parties, if children are allowed, pets are allowed, and if smoking is allowed. Here you'll see what time is check-in, right? So I'll put in 3 p.m. Checkout is also gonna be 3 p.m. as well. Oh no, we'll do uh, 12 p.m., right? Because we have to have time to clean up, right? Okay, and here we have late check-in, private bathroom, and so on and so forth. So you'll go ahead and just fill all this information out. Okay, so I went ahead and entered in some information right here, like no crack. Okay, so I went ahead and entered in some information right here, like the size, we have our cancellation policy, and then here I put any other rules, no crack, no drugs. Yes, this includes marijuana as well because some states actually marijuana is still illegal. So yeah. And then here I put in the check-in and also the checkout. Okay. So go ahead and fill out the property details on your own free time, right? The next is the map section. Now we're gonna skip this for now because we're going to use OpenStreetMap and I'll show you guys how to embed Google Maps a little bit later but we'll go ahead and skip this for now. The next is owners. Now this is where we can assign owners to the actual property. However, there is a bit of confusion here. So usually people think that the owners right here is referring to the owners, but the owner is actually referring to the users in WordPress. I'll touch base about that a little bit after we're done creating this. So I'll go ahead and just skip this for now. And then here we have a paid submission. We'll talk more about the paid packages a little bit later in the video. So for now, let's just go ahead and publish this, right? So I think we're done here. After you guys fill out all that information, I'll then click on publish. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and click on view listing. 
All right, and here is our property. You'll see that this is for rent. Here we have the images. If I click on show all images, you'll see users can beautifully just scroll through all of our images that we uploaded, right? We'll scroll down here. You'll see the houses for rent in Santa Clarita, the back house, entire home, cabin. We have the guest, the number of bedrooms. We have the description. And then here we can actually select the booking. So here I'll select, you know, five days. Uh, we can select the number of guests, right? And then you'll see the price adjusts. So you'll see we have the cleaning fee, the city fee, and also security deposits. And the total is $825. Right here, you'll see we can play a little YouTube video right here of uh, this guy. And you know, this can just be any video, right? This can be a video about the property or whatever if you wanna showcase something. Below that, we have the price details, right? So we can show them the fees and also the discounted rates. Here we have the address, the listing details, the features, and everything else that we have added will be displayed right here. At the bottom, you're gonna see availability. Now, later in the video, I'll show you guys how to mix and match these sections. But uh, for now, you can see that the price for Monday through, uh, Monday through Friday is 125, and then we added the 125 on the weekends, which is a little bit more expensive. So then it jumps to 125. So you'll see 100 bucks but over here, it does cost a little bit more money, right? So that is our listing and you'll see everything looks great. All this stuff on the right side, we'll talk more about how to uh, design this and how to edit this a little bit later. But for the most part, that's how we can create a listing. Okay, so now that I've showed you guys how to manually create listings ourselves, now let's allow users to list on our website. But before we do that, we need to enable an option. So over here under dashboard, under the general settings, there is an option we need to select and that is the membership anyone can register. This will allow anyone to register on our website so they can list properties and offer services on our websites. So I'll go ahead and scroll down and then click on save changes. Now there's one more option I do wanna quickly turn on in the general options. So I know this is in the theme customizer, but I do want to actually turn on the actual map. So over here under map, I'll click on map and I just wanna change this to OpenStreet for now because we don't have a Google Maps API and then click on save changes. Okay, so now that I've done that, now let's talk about how users can actually list on your website. Okay, so over here you'll see that I'm a brand new user and I wanna go ahead and submit a property. At the top right, I'll click on submit property. So right away, the user will be greeted with these several options, description, price, images, details, location, amenities, and calendar. So the user will go ahead and fill all this information out. So this will be like the Santa Clarita home. And then for category, you'll see they can select the house. We have the back house, right? The number of guests, right? Above capacity, sure. We'll allow up to 10. The city name. And then the area, we'll put North Santa Clarita. And then here they can enter in the description, right? So this is description. And then I'll click on continue. Next it's gonna prompt users to actually create an account. So I don't have an account. So right here, I'll click on don't have an account. And here we can go ahead and enter in the information to create our own account. So I'll put in paddywhack, and then paddywhack at awol.com and enter a password. All right, I'll agree with our terms and then create an account. All right, the account was created, we can now log in. So I'll go ahead and log in. So here is my credentials. Now also this picture, we can go ahead and update this and we'll talk more about that when we get to the theme options. So right here, I'll click on login. Okay, so you'll see now it created an account for us. You'll see we have our listings included and right now we're on a free membership, right? And we'll talk more about memberships and listings a little bit later in this video. But for now, let's just walk you guys through on how users actually create stuff. So here we entered in the uh, information, right? So we have the city name, Santa Clarita. And then here we have some private notes, check-in messages. I'll just go ahead and skip this for now. I'll save this. And now we're brought to a price, right? So price per night, 50 bucks. We have the same thing right before label, after label. So now you guys are kind of understanding where these options are being shown, right? So it's just the same thing, right? So price per night, we'll put, I'll put the same, right? $50, right? It's gonna be the same no matter where they go. We'll go ahead and just scroll down here and then click on 
save. So the next is the images. So users can go ahead and select images right here and upload them. So I'll go ahead and select some images. Okay. They can also enter in their own YouTube video if they wanna go ahead and go that routes or they can use Vimeo, right? Next, I'll click on save. Okay, same thing here. They'll enter in their listing details. So I filled out some of the listing information right here. Uh, I'll go ahead and scroll to the bottom and then click on save. Here we have the location and now you'll see that OpenStreetMap is available. So we can just go ahead and enter in the address there. Users can also go ahead and pin the address somewhere, right? So if they want to just enter it in, they can say, I want to uh, place the pin right here, right? So they don't have to actually, you know, it doesn't have to be 100% correct, but they can always just put the pin where their property is located. All right, I'll click on save. Here they can enter in their amenities, right? I'll put in three amenities. So next we have the, when is your listing available? Now you guys can actually block specific days. So you can say, you know what, these four days, you know, I'm just going to book it myself just because I don't want users to have access to these days. So you'll see dates booked, right? So you guys can go ahead and exclude specific days here for people who are uh, listing on your website, right? So now you'll see that we have booked those four days so they are no longer available, right? And we'll scroll down to the bottom and then just click on save. And that is it. So that is how we can create listings. Over here, you'll see the user has their own personal custom dashboard where they can actually view their listing. And it is waiting for approval in our accounts. And we can approve this by going to the admin side. So I'm over here back in my WordPress dashboard. And over here, if I click on listings, you're gonna see this is pending. And this is from our user, right? So this is from Paddywhack, right? And I can click on this, click on edit. Okay, so here is their listing and you'll see we can actually update their own listing. So we can always override their listing. If they didn't enter enough information or if they spelled something wrong, we can always go ahead and update everything right here. If you guys wanna make this live, all you gotta do is click on publish there at the top right and this will publish their listing. So over here, view listing and you'll see that uh, the images here are uploaded and you'll see that their listing is now ready to go and it is fully live on the website. So that is how you guys can also allow users to uh, post on your website and that is the process they go through when they wanna create listings on your website. All right, so now that we know how to create listings and we're a little familiar about the WordPress theme, now let's go to the next section and design the website. Now we are going to show you guys how to design the website using Elementor. Elementor is a free drag and drop page builder, right? And after probably like an hour of using it, you guys will definitely get the hang of it. So in this part of the video, I'll show you guys how to design the website using the Elementor drag and drop page builder. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. Okay, so now that we know how to create listings and we know how to create categories for them, now let's learn how to use the page builder. But before we do that, I quickly wanna show you guys how to assign any of these home pages as your primary home page. Here at the top, you're gonna to see customize. Now we're gonna talk about the theme customizer in the very next section after we talk about the design aspect, but I quickly want to just touch base on this really quickly before we do that. Now these are the theme options, but we're gonna skip these for now. You're gonna to scroll to the bottom and you're gonna see home page settings. Now right here, you're gonna see home page. Now the home page is the actual page you want users to visit when they first enter in your domain name, right? So for example, here we have all these different home pages, right? So we have Elementor version two, right? So this is the home page Elementor version two. Here we have the uh, Elementor version six. And then you'll see it showcases this one right here. So you guys can actually choose between the Elementor ones. These are from another page builder. You guys don't need this. And we'll talk more about how to delete pages and everything when we talk about how to create pages and also how to adjust the menu. But for now, this is how you guys would assign the specific home page, right? You guys would just use this specific section. But for now, let's just go ahead and just use variation one. And now for our post page, I wanna go ahead and select the blog page. So we're gonna select blog list. And this is essentially where the blog will be located right here. So you'll see all the blog posts will be displayed right here. And we'll talk more again when we talk about how to um, you know, create a blog and contact form and everything else. But for now, we can select homepage element of variation for our homepage. And then our blog page will be our blog list. So I'll go ahead and close this. 
Now, before we talk about the page builder, I quickly want to talk about this landing page right here. Now, this landing page right here is actually being propagated from the theme. So over here, let's click on edit page. And before I show you guys how to use the builder, I want to touch base on the actual theme. So here is the back end for our page, right? And if I click on edit with Elementor, this will actually turn on the page builder. However, if we scroll down, you're going to see there's this option called select header type. Now, right here, you'll see we are currently using the theme slider, but there are other headers that we can use. We can use Google Maps, we can use video header, or we can just use a blank image. To give you guys an example, here are our other demos, right? This right here is actually using the video option where they are using a video and then they place some text here and then the search bar displays right here. The other header is just an image, right? So it's just an image where it has the text right here and then also it has like the check-in and check-out dates, right? And then there's also the Google map as well. So you guys can actually go between any of these headers here, for example, I selected the video header. So now we have the option for the video header. And this is where you guys can upload the uh, video and also the image and anything else you guys want to add. So for example, I'll click on upload video and here is the video that they used and I'll click on insert a page. However, there is a trick you need to do for this to work. You'll just go ahead and get rid of your domain and let it sit like this, wp-content, and that will actually propagate the video. And here we'll do the same thing for the cover image. We'll just use this video here, right? And I'll also do the same thing, just get rid of the domain. Here we can enter this full screen, right? And then I'll put book your vacation, book now, right? And then for the video heights, I'll just enter in 700. So I went ahead and I entered in some information right here. I'll put in the opacity of 0 0.02 and then click on update. And then I'll view the page. And then you'll see we have that uh, background and then we have that video that just pops in right there and everything looks great. So that is how you guys can adjust different headers. Now, remember, this is not from the actual page builder. This is from the theme. You guys don't have to use these options if you don't want to. In fact, we can already create this using the page builder. So next I selected the image and then you'll go through the same process here. You can enter in a header image and so on and so forth, right? So that's just an option that you guys can do if you guys want. And I'll go ahead and just say, I'll just use a theme slider for now and then click on updates. All right, and I'll view the page. And then right here, we're back to square one where users can go ahead and use the slider in case you guys wanna use this on your websites. But let's just go ahead and get rid of this. And I'm also gonna show you guys how to do all of this from scratch using the actual page builder instead. So I'll click on edit page right here and we're going to just get rid of it. So under the theme slider section, I'm gonna put none, right? And then click on updates. Then I'll click on view page. And then you're gonna see that our header is gone. So all it really did was get rid of our landing page, but we can do all this with the page builder. So up here at the top, let's go ahead and turn on the page builder. Let's click on edit with Elementor and this will turn on the page builder. Okay, I'll go ahead and close this and I'll close this. So Elementor works with elements. You'll see here there's a specific elements on the left side. These are the basic free ones, right? Here are the pro ones, but we'll go ahead and close that because we don't have the pro version. And then here are the other general elements, right? If we keep scrolling down, you're gonna see WP Rental widgets. So these are more elements for the Elementor page builder. And there's quite a bit, right? You'll see there is quite a few that we can use here, right? So let's first just go ahead and stick to the basics. If you guys just do wanna add in something, all you gotta do is take the elements and just drag and drop it onto the page. Now, whenever you use an element, there's three different tabs. You have the content element. This controls the actual contents and sometimes the position of the actual elements. And then there's the styling tab. This controls the color and also the topography of the actual element right here. So you'll see we can go ahead and you know change, the, change that and so we can change the size and so on and so forth. And then there's also the advanced tab. The advanced tab will do things like you can add in space, you can add in margin, and you can also add in cool things like motion effects, where you can add in effects there, or you can add in a border around your actual elements. And then you can even add in like a box shadow, right? So you'll see here how there's just like this, you know, this box shadow around your specific element. So that is what the three columns represents. And every single element has these three columns. I'll go ahead and delete this now. So if you guys wanna add in like a button, you'll just drag and drop the button. 
And then the same thing, the content, style, advanced, and so on and so forth. Now for every element, you can right click on it and there's more options. You can duplicate it, you can copy and paste the style, or you can just delete the elements. So for example, I'll duplicate it, and then I can take this and drag and drop it onto other parts of the website, right? So I'll go ahead and right click and delete. Now let's say that you guys made a mistake, right? Let's say you did something like this, where you dropped it and it went down here, and this, you dragged it and it went over there, right? You guys can always go back into the history and fix any changes that you've made. Here at the bottom, you're gonna see history, right? And here you can see that there is a history, right? So even going back into that box shadow right here, you guys can actually go back into the history and revise any changes that you've made to your websites. And then to go back, you'll just click on the nine squares and then you're brought back to square one. All right, so that is basically the Elementor page builder in a nutshell. Now let's say you guys wanna add a section. You'll see here how there is this plus section here at the top. I'll click on plus. And then here we have this little plus icon. So I'll click on add a new section. And here you can see we can enter in rows. We have just, you know, none, we have one, three, four, and then these other structures right here. What we can do to get started is just simply enter a one column row, right? And it is a little hard to work on this. So what we can do is we can actually delete this and we can actually start somewhere else and then we can drag and drop it, right? So let's start down here, right? Where we have a lot more space. So I'll go ahead and click on plus, the plus, and then also the plus icon. And what we can do is we can start adding in elements, but I do wanna actually use the other elements from the theme. So here we have all these other elements, right? We even have this slider, right? So let's go ahead and drag and drop it. And then you'll see that we have the properties listed for the actual slider. Now, remember earlier how we created the city names and we created all these other different um, categories? You guys can actually showcase specific listings only to display if conditions are met. For example, I only want the houses to display. And then you'll see only the houses that we create will be displayed right here. We can also do something else like city names. So here we have Los Angeles, right? but there's only one, so maybe that's not the best idea, right? But you guys can go ahead and now use those categories to help create more specific places to rent for your websites. And then over here, like for example, we can you know put in like places in Los Angeles. And then we'll go ahead and style this a little bit. We'll change the color to black, right? Whoops, we'll open that back up. And then we'll change this to like Poppins and then we'll make this bold, and then we'll boost it up like that, right? And then from there, we can add in more, right? So we can add in like a small text editor below that, right? Like, check out the best places in Los Angeles. And then we can add in more elements. You know, we can even add in a, uh, I don't know, an icon or something. You know, you guys get the point, right? We can keep adding more as we go, right? And we can style this, right? And then obviously you would probably just change this to Los Angeles, right? So over here under the city names, you would just select Los Angeles and then all of the properties in Los Angeles would be filtered so it would correspond to our text, right? So the website's making more sense as we go. Now, if you guys wanna make another section, all you gotta do is click on the plus again and then just keep making more sections as we go. So here I'll enter this new section. Now, the best way to learn about these elements, guys, is simply by trying all of them out. I personally have not tried these elements. So like here's one that we can use, right? And then here we have some other ones right here. So featured listing, let's take a look at that one. A featured listing, okay. Yeah, that's another style, right? Type one, type two. Ooh, that's actually pretty cool, I like that, right? Type two and then type three, right? Okay, yeah, pretty cool, right? Yeah, you I mean, not bad. I'll go ahead and delete this. And then here we have featured owner, right? Let's take a look at the owner, right? So here we have Paddywhack, we have our owners, right? And then here we have design type one, design type two. Okay, yeah, so here's our owners. And then the other ones are just blank spots because we haven't added images for those specific elements, right? So pretty interesting, right? So on your own free time, feel free to just go through here, check all these out and see which one works best for you. Obviously there's a lot to go through and this is something that you guys should probably just do on your own free time because uh, I can easily go through all these elements, but a lot of these can be learned simply by just dragging and dropping and just learning how they work. 
But let's just go ahead and create a landing page now. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna delete this one right here. And for this specific section, I'll click on the six dots and I wanna make this large, right? So I wanna make this fit to the screen, right? So now this is gonna be our landing page and then we're gonna drag and drop it above the actual section above it, right? So first thing I wanna do is I wanna enter in a search filter very similar to the one that was on our previously landing page. So over here, we're gonna find the advanced search filter. Here we go, the advanced search, right? Okay, so here's our advanced search filter. Like, where do you want to book, right? Okay, and then we can go ahead and add in like a background here. So under the six dots, under the style section, here we can add in something else, right? I'll click on classic and we can add in like an image or we can add in a color. So I'll go ahead and add in an image here. I'll just use a property and click on select. So here is the actual property, right? And then up here, I'll click on the dots again. And then for the basic, I can now add in like elements right here, right? So I'll add in something else right here. Book now, right? I'll put this in the centered. And then for the style, I'll just put in like a, a white. Here I'll put in like a white. And then I'll make this larger, right? So I'll make this a lot larger. Book now. All right. We'll, we'll do some little changes here, right? We'll put in poppins. Okay. Now, really quickly, you know, you guys can tell that this text is hard to see, right? So I want to add in an overlay. So to add an overlay, I'll just right click, edit section. And then for the overlay, I'm just going to add in a small overlay right here, right? So I'll just throw an overlay right here. And then we'll go ahead and choose the opacity, right? Like book now, right? Okay. And then below that, we'll throw in some more text here, right? And then like book your next vacation. And then I will go to style here, put that in the middle, and then obviously make this white and just make it a little bit bigger, right? So just a little bit bigger, book your next vacation. So I'm gonna change book now to book your vacation. There we go. Okay, so obviously, you know, there's a lot we can do here, right? We can go ahead and, um, you know, add in more text, we can add in more elements, and we can also go ahead and further design this style right here. So if you guys do wanna change like the actual style for this this, um, you know, this box right here, we can do that. Or we can just add in like a transparent box, right? So we can make this transparent. So the background color, we'll make that transparent. And then also the border color, we'll also make this transparent as well. So now that I've done that, what I'll do is I'll click on updates and that's gonna save the progress. And I actually wanna take this and I wanna drag this to the top right here. So we can do this either by dragging it manually, you know, and using the actual mouse button to just drag it to the top, and then that's our new landing page, or we can use the navigator, right? Here there's a navigator, and you'll see here is a section, and I can drag and drop it to like the very next section. You see that? And now that section displays right here. Or I can just take that and drag it to the top. This is very useful when you're trying to like, you know, design the page here at the top and the menu gets in the way. So it can be very useful for that specific reason. But uh, let's go ahead and now click on update. And let's view the page. And voila, we now have this beautiful landing page that we created in just a few seconds. Now there's small things that we need to do here, right? We got some touch-ups, right? We need to probably make this image full width and also get rid of this text because we just no longer need it, right? So let's go ahead and edit with the builder and I'll click on edit section and for the background right here. And then for the image, I want to actually take this and I want to go to display size and do cover. So now we selected cover. So now it covers the entire section. And then also for this, where do you want to book? We can just get rid of it. We don't need it no more, right? So I'll click on the elements and I'll just get rid of it. That's why I like using Elementor more than the theme defaults. You'll see we have a lot more control over the page, right? We can add in like another button here below it. We can keep adding as we go to make things a little bit more um, accurate. So we have a lot more control over the landing page. So I'll go ahead and just delete that. And feel free on your own free time, guys, to go through here and just add things as you go, right? We can go ahead and you know change these properties. We can add in something over here, like a three column row. We can put a text here, we can put an image, right? And then also we can put like a button right here and so on and so forth. 
And you can even duplicate these columns, right? Duplicates and duplicates and deletes and deletes. And there you go. So now we have our three columns. And then obviously here we can add in images, right? So we can add in like a image here, right? We'll put in an image over there and then so on and so forth. And then you guys can design this any which way that you guys choose. So feel free to go through the rest of the page, right? To edit anything that you guys want using the builder. A lot of this is just trial and error. You guys will have to just sort of mess around with things and learn how it works. But overall, that's how you guys can use the builder. It's very simple to use. It's not rocket science, right? After probably just like an hour of using it, you guys will definitely get the hang of it. One thing I also wanted to show you guys about the page builder is about the categories, right? So if you guys do use any element right here, like for example, here we have this rental category slider where we can add in these categories. But if we add in these categories, you guys are gonna see that it just creates these placeholders. You guys can actually change the images for these specific categories in the category section. So over here, back on the dashboard, if we go over here to listings, I'll then click on categories. Now here you're gonna see that we have like the apartments, the cabin, and all these other categories that we had access to with the page builder. All you gotta do is click on the category. So for example, I'll click on edit for the apartments. And then right here, it has featured image. So we can use an image to represent the apartment, right? So I'll go ahead and upload an image. I'll use this one for the apartments. I'll insert this into the post. Then I'll click on update. Okay. Now if I go over here and I refresh the page, at the bottom right here, you'll see apartments, right? So all you gotta do is just assign the images for those specific categories to get rid of the placeholders. So I just wanted to throw this in here just in case you guys wanted to use the category elements. Now, really quick, if you guys do wanna learn more about Elementor and Elementor Pro, I actually have a four and a half hour video that actually covers all of the fundamentals about Elementor, including the page builder, we actually build pages from scratch. We go through all of the theme options. We show you guys all of the advanced features. And we also talk about Flexbox and everything else. So if you guys do wanna learn more about Elementor, you guys can watch this video. I don't wanna cram it all in this video because it's a lot to cover, right? But this video right here will teach you all the fundamentals, including all of the advanced features with the Elementor page builder. So I'll go ahead and leave this link in the description below of this video. All right, so now that I've shown you guys how to actually do this with the page builder, you guys can go to these other pages like the About Us page and all these other pages. And all you gotta do is just go to Edit with Elementor and then you guys can turn on the page builder and design all these pages. So just to give you guys an example here, I'll click on Edit with Elementor. And then the same thing, right? So here they just entered in this you know, heading text. You guys can just go ahead and scroll down on the websites. Uh, over here, I'll duplicate this. And we can even drag and drop this down here, right? And we can, you know, duplicate that and then drag it down right here. Now there is one thing I do wanna show you guys. If you guys do like just throw in like a random button and you wanna take the styling options right here, all you gotta do is click on copy and then go over here and click on paste style. And then it'll just copy all the styles from that element. So yeah, on your own free time, feel free to go over here. If you don't want this section, you can just delete it. If you wanna get rid of the map, you can just delete the map and then so on and so forth, right? So that is pretty much it for the page builder. So let's go ahead now and click on update. All right, and then let's view the page. Now over here, let's click on contact. So next we have this contact page, but I wanna let you guys know that this contact page is actually using a theme template. So right here, let's click on edit page. Now we're gonna to touch base on page templates in the next section, but here you'll see template, right? So essentially what this theme has done is they've actually created pre-created pages for you where all you gotta do is just create a page and then click on contact page or any page that you want and it'll create those pages for you. If you guys do wanna create your own contact page from scratch, you guys can just do that using the page builder. But that's an example of why you can't edit this page is because this is actually created by the theme and not the actual page builder. All right, now let's go ahead and go back to the home page. So now that I showed you guys about the page builder and also the contact page, now let's touch base about how to create pages and also how to add them to the menu. We'll also touch base on page templates in just a little bit. So right here, you'll see plus new, and this is where we can add in like pages or posts. Here, let's just go ahead and select page. Now right here, a lot of title, this will be Daryl's page, right? I'll click on publish and publish. And then right here, I'll add in a new page, right? 
And this will be Patty's page. Here I'll click on publish and publish. Okay. Now, if you go to the website, you're gonna notice that, um, you know, the page is nowhere to be found. And that's just because we need to actually assign it to the actual menu. So let's go over here to dashboard. And under appearance, we're now gonna click on menus. Here you'll see select a menu to edit, and we're gonna select the primary menu and select the menu. Now here you're gonna see the actual menu. So we have the home, we have all these different pages that were created for us. We can actually delete all of this and start from scratch because as you can tell, there's a lot to go over here and a lot of this is just demo content. So I wanna actually delete this menu. So right here, I'll delete the menu and click on okay. Okay, now we're gonna create a new menu. So up here, create a new menu and this will be the main menu. And this is the primary menu and then I'll click on create menu. Now on the left side, you're gonna see pages, right? This is where we can add pages to the menu. So right here, I'll click on view all. Now this one right here, you'll see this is our front page Elementor. So this is actually using our front page. So this is our home page. So I'm gonna add this to the menu, but I also wanna add in the blog list, the about us. And then I also wanna add in, you know, Daryl's page. And then also uh, we have Patty's page, right? Where's Patty's page at? There's Patty's page, right? And then also we can add in something else, like we can add in add new listing, we can add in uh, the dashboard, right? And I think that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and add those to the menu. And here we can actually go ahead and make a drop down, right? So if you wanna make it like a drop down, we can just like put it there like that. Also, I should probably add in our contact us page, right? So here's the second one. And we need to actually find our contact page. So here is the contact page. I'll add that to the menu. And then I'll click on Save Menu. Okay. So here is our current menu, right? And if I go to Visit Sites, you'll now see that uh, here is our menu. So we have the home page, blog list, about us, add new listing, Daryl's page, Patty's page, and contact, right? So the next thing is we probably need to change the actual name of this, right? So let's do that. Let's go back over here to menus. And right here, I'll click on this and this is just gonna be our home page, right? Uh, here we have about us, add new listing, Patty's page. I think that's all good, right? Here I'll just change this to blog, right? Just, just blog. And this will be our about page, right? And then I'll click on save menu, okay? And over here under visit sites, you'll see everything now works great, right? So we have the home, the blog, the about, and if we click on it, it takes us right to those pages, right? So here's the home page, here's Daryl's page, right? Daryl's page is empty, right? Because we haven't added anything in here. So what we can do here is just use the page builder. And then also the same thing for Patty's page. You guys are gonna see it's actually using this map header. And that's just because over here under the header type, we need to actually change this to something like, you know, none, right? Here, I'll click on update. And if I view the page, you'll see now we can go ahead and edit this as usual. So I'll edit the page and then click on edit with Elementor. Now over here, you guys will see there's this right sidebar. We can actually get rid of this in the settings right here by just going to page layout and just doing Elementor full width. That'll get rid of all of the other necessary options that we don't need on the website. So then we can go ahead and build from scratch, right? But there is another option that we can uh, use, right? So right here under add a templates. So the theme actually gave us some templates that we can use. So I'll go ahead and insert the about us template they gave us, right? So these are just like pre-made pages they gave us for free. You know, I don't know why they did, but uh, hey, why not? You know, they're free. And then here is the about us page that they have created for us. So uh, yeah, what we can do is we can use this to work off and then we can go ahead and you know mess with things and um, you know change the elements and so on and so forth, right? And then all I gotta do right here is maybe change this to Patty's page, right? And click on updates. And then I'll view the page. 
Okay, and then this is Patty's page, right? If I click on Patty's page, you'll see it takes them to this specific page. All right, so next I wanna to touch base again on the contact form. Over here under the contact, you guys are gonna notice that we have this pre-built contact form. Now, this is actually a template created by the theme and it's actually not using the Elementor page builder. And here users can actually go ahead and put in their full name, their email, their you know website and send you guys a message. Now, many of the times when you guys fill this out, it will go to spam or not delivered at all. Now, I've actually made a video about this where all you guys need to do is install a plugin in order to fix this. So this is the plugin, it's called WP Mail, and this will actually force all of the emails to go directly to your customer's inbox. Also, there is another plugin called WP Forms, and I actually do recommend to install this free plugin on your website instead of actually using the actual uh, default uh, contact page that they've created for us. So let me quickly show you guys where you guys can download these. So let's go over here to Dashboard, and under the Plugins, here, click on Add New. If you guys are brand new to this, don't worry about this because um, these are actually free plugins and don't cost you anything. And this is actually a lot more efficient than the other uh, contact form they give you. So right here, I'll type in WP Forms. And here's the plugin that you guys will need to install, right? So it has like more than 5 million active installs and it's a pretty popular contact form. So you'll go ahead and install this plugin right here. Also, if you guys are having issues with your contact, a format setting emails. All you gotta do is install this plugin right here and then just go ahead and follow this video. This video is about eight minutes long. It's not too complicated, very simple. You just have to um, just put some info in the plugin and then everything will work just fine. Now, once you guys actually do install those plugins, uh, let's go over here to the contact form and let me show you guys how to create one from scratch. So right here, I'll click on edit page. Now over here on the right side, you're gonna see contact page. This essentially will propagate the contact page. Now these are sort of depreciated options, not all of them, but some of them. And instead of actually using the contact page, we can just say, you know what, I just wanna use like, you know, the Elementor full width, and I wanna actually build one from scratch. And also I wanna scroll down here and I wanna just fix these options. So show page title, no. And then also for the header, I just wanna put none, right? I don't want any headers. Here, click on update. Now this does say global over here and that's because it's using the theme options and we're gonna cover the theme options in the very next section. So next I'll click on edit with Elementor. And then now we can go ahead and build our page from scratch, right? So what I'll do right here is I'll quickly just use one of their templates they gave us. So I'll just use uh, the uh, FAQ page and I'll just change this to contact us, All right? And I'll use some of this, right? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'll just, there we go. Here, I'll click on the plus and I'll just put in the two column, right? So when I actually install that plugin, now I have the ability to actually use that form. So I'll type in WP forms, I'm sorry, forms. And here is the actual form. So I'll just drag that there and I'll select the default contact form. And then voila, we now have this contact form. And maybe over here, I can get a little bit more customizable here, and you know, add something right here, like, uh, you know, what do you need help with and so on and so forth, right? So that's how you guys can build your own custom contact us page from scratch. I highly recommend to install the WP Forms plugin because that will allow you to uh, embed the contact form on your website so people can actually send you emails. I do recommend to install WP Forms on your website. I feel like it's a lot more accurate and most of the times the emails are sent directly to your customer's inbox. Okay, so just a note, if you guys do have problems with your emails not being sent from your contact form, this is a very common problem with WordPress. Now there's a quick fix. I do have a video on WP Forms where you, I'll show you guys how to create your own uh, contact form from scratch. It's a very diverse uh, contact form, it's great. And then also I'll show you guys how to use the SMTP to route the emails from your server directly to the email inbox. So all of the emails will be sent to your customers. Uh, WordPress emails, it's like a constant problem, you know, and it's just, uh, it's not WordPress's fault, really, it's the providers because they actually mark WordPress as spam. So uh, those two plugins will fix everything for you guys. So I'll go ahead and leave those two tutorials in the description of this video for you guys to check out later. If you guys do want to learn more about these plugins, I'll go ahead and leave these two videos right here in the description below of this video where they can definitely help you guys out with your contact form. All right, with that said, let's go to the next section. 
Okay, so next let's go ahead and talk about page templates. So over here, if I click on the search bar, you guys are gonna notice that we have this specific page right here. And this page, you guys notice, we can't use this with the page builder and there's no way I can you know, edit it because this is strictly coming from the theme. Now, let's say if I deleted this page, let's go ahead and talk about that. So over here, I'll click on edit page and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to the trash. So I'm actually just going to delete this page right here. Okay, so that page was deleted. Now let's go back to visit sites and see what happens if I you know, do a search. So I'll go ahead and just do a quick search right here. And then you guys are gonna see that nothing happens. Nothing happens because we have actually deleted the page where the search results page is propagated. So let me show you guys a little bit about page templates and how that works with the theme. So up here, I'll go to plus new and page. Go ahead and close that. And over here on the right side, you're gonna see templates, right? And how this theme works is essentially, we can go ahead and create page templates for the actual theme. So right here, you'll see we have the advanced search results, we have blog list, we have properties list, and we have all these other pages right here, right? User dashboard and so on and so forth. So if I want to propagate the search results page, I need to select the page template for the advanced search results. And then I'll click on publish and publish. So just remember, a lot of the pages can't really be uh, worked with because they are using the actual theme and not the page builder. And then you'll see here that we have the search results page. And if I go over here to the home and I click on search, you'll then see that the page now propagates, right? So if you guys are missing parts of your website, like the blog or the search results page, usually a lot of these are in the page template section and all you need to do is create the page. Now let's go ahead and do one more right here. So plus new and page. All right, so let me just explain this one more time. So these right here are referring to the actual page builder. So these have nothing to do with the theme. Theme is referring to the default globals, which are located in the theme settings, which we'll cover in the very next section. Here we have these other pages, and these pages are strictly needed if you guys do want to integrate uh, payment gateways or if you want to have a Stripe charge page. You guys will need to propagate these pages if you guys decide to monetize your websites. Also, these pages right here will actually create the user dashboard in the user settings. So for example, I'll go ahead and select the user dashboard favorite, and then I'll put main favorite. Okay, here I'll click on publish and publish. You're gonna see that main favorite now propagates. So when you guys create pages, it'll actually create these sections over here in the user dashboard. So if you're missing something like your inbox or if you're missing the review section, all you need to do is create the pages and then these sections right here will propagate. That's how the theme works. I know it's a little weird, right? But um, if you do create the pages, they will propagate all right here. So if you're missing any of these sections, all you gotta do is just create them from the plus page section in order for these options to propagate. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just quickly touch base on the dashboard. We didn't really cover a lot about the dashboard yet, so let me just go ahead and walk you guys through the dashboard and all these general options. So this is the general dashboard, and this is the page users are going to see when they log into your websites. So the first is the dashboard, and here they can see their bookings, their most viewed listings, and the most booked listing right here, right? The next is their profile, and this is where they can update their profile information, and also they can upload their image of themselves. I do recommend that you guys actually have users change this and fix this because you don't want a bunch of default images showcasing on your websites. The next is the subscription. So users can actually purchase their own subscription if they actually want to uh, post on your website. Now this is optional, right? You don't have to do this, but here users can actually say, you know what, I wanna actually go with this package here and then they can pay via transfer wire. Now we are going to embed payment gateways a little bit later in this video. So we'll come back to this when we talk about the monetization, but you guys can actually say, you know what? I want users to you know, pick a specific package and that's how they can post on the websites. You guys can use memberships or you guys can use pay per listing. Over here we have the listing and these are the listings for the actual user. And over here they can edit the property, they can disable it, they can set as featured and they can also delete the property. So the next is the add new listing, and we can't add a listing because we're on a free membership and we actually have too many listings and that's just default because they created it for us. But we'll go ahead and adjust this when we create memberships and stuff like that in the monetization section of this video. The next is the all-in-one calendar. Here the user can actually book the specific days of when they have something booked, 
where they can just say, oh yeah, I have this booked or that booked and they can create their own custom pricing and period reservation, right? So this is if the user actually gets like a phone call and people actually wanna book it off the website, they can go ahead and do that from right here. Here is the favorites, right? If you guys wanna add favorites, sure, why not? I think uh, every website has favorites. Here there is my bookings. So if people do actually book on your website, they can go ahead and see it all right here, right? And the next one is my reservations. So the next is my reservations. And this is actually referring to people who have already booked something on your website. So this is actually for the customer and not for the actual owners, right? So this is like for someone who's saying, oh, I booked this, you know, and here is all their trip information. They can click on the property and they can view everything from right here, right? So just to reiterate, this is for the people that come to your website and want to book something on your website, okay? They can contact the owner, trip details, invoice details, and so on and so forth. And we'll scroll down. Here they have their reviews. Here you guys can see re property reviews, right? So you can go ahead and see the reviews people have left. And then also you can reply to those reviews listed on your properties. Here we have inbox. If someone sends you guys a message from the website, here they can go ahead and, uh, you know, they can see the message and then they can also go ahead and reply to those messages or they can send them an email, whatever you guys wanna do. All right, and the last one is invoices. So if people do pay for anything, they'll be showcased right here. So the dashboard can be used for both owners and also for people who want to book on your website. You guys can disable or add more to this if you guys choose to do so by just deleting the pages that you don't want in the customer portal. So now that we talked about the dashboard, let's move to the next section and talk about the theme options. All right, so now that you guys know how to design the website using the drag and drop page builder, now let's move on to the next section. So in this part of the video, I'll be introducing you guys to the theme options. The theme options give you a little bit more styling options, like you can adjust the listing page, you can choose different headers, and there's various other theme options that will restrict or enable specific features. So in this part of the video, we're gonna cover all the theme options for this WordPress theme. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. Okay, so in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys the WP Rentals theme options. So let's go ahead and access them. So over here, let's go back to the dashboard. And right here under the WP Rentals, we'll click on the General. The General tab will then showcase all of the theme options. Now, in case you guys are not familiar, the theme options control various parts of the website that the page builder normally does not. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go through a lot of these options right here. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I'll just go ahead and briefly discuss the more important ones and how they affect your website, okay? So let's get started. So the first option is the country. This is where you can set the default country. You guys can also change between feet and meters because I'm very aware that a lot of the European countries in Asia, you guys use meters. In America, we use feet, so we are on a different system. Here, there's some other general options like the orphan delete. This will actually delete listings when users just create draft listings and then do nothing with them. So after a day, they'll just go ahead and auto delete those and they'll have to recreate them. Here we have the theme cache where you guys can choose to enable or disable this theme cache, but I do recommend to keep it. It is pretty useful. Here you have the Google Analytics option if you guys want to paste your Google Analytics code, okay? So next we have the appearance, and some of these options are not really relevant. For example, the wide versus boxed, we use the page builder and that's default to wide, so it doesn't really matter what you select, it's always going to be wide. So next is the property list, and this will actually showcase 10 properties, right? So on the search results page right here, if we scroll down, you'll see that 13 are found, right? But if I scroll to the bottom, you'll see that there's this little uh, next page, and that's because we're only listing 10 right here. So you can list as many as you want by adjusting that number. Here we have the listing page and the archive page. So if you guys do want a sidebar, you guys can add a sidebar to the right or to the left side of the blog and the listing page. We will talk about how to add widgets a little bit later, right? But for now, this is where you guys can choose to add a sidebar or no sidebar. Next, we have the blog category. Now, later on, we're going to adjust widgets. And here you can select a specific category of widgets to the actual blog category page. So the next is the blog card design. If you guys want to adjust the blog cards right here that propagate on your blog, you guys can go ahead and do that here. Personally, guys, I think the blog for this specific theme is not good, and I would definitely recommend using Elementor uh, Pro if you guys want to incorporate a blog because I found that a lot of these options 
uh, they didn't really work too well for me and a lot of them were depreciated. So I don't think the developer really wants to focus on the blog for this theme. So if you guys do wanna run a blog, I definitely recommend to actually use the Elementor page builder uh, to run a blog. Here we have the listing type for taximony pages. This is actually important. So if you guys do create specific categories and you want to design that specific page, you'll need to select standard or half map. This can be found if you guys actually go over to the search page and we click on some taximonies. So for example, I'll click on this one here. Now these right here are taximonies, right? So if I click on Vila, it's going to pull up all of the listings for Vila right here, right? And over here, this is where you can adjust it, right? So we have the standard, and then we also have the half map. So I'll click on half map. And then over here, I'll go ahead and refresh the page. And now you guys will see that the options right now are half map, right? So you guys might want to change this for either standard or half map, and that's for the tax and money pages. Listing type for advanced search. So remember earlier in the video, we talked about like the basic search. So over here, I'll go ahead and just do a quick search. You guys will see that this is a half map. You guys can always adjust this to just standard, right? So I wanna clarify something. If you guys do select standard, then these results do not apply to you. If you select half map, then these options will apply because there is a half map. So over here, I'll select map on the left side, click on save changes. And if we go to our website and click on search, the map will now appear on the left side. Pretty cool. So the next option is the logo and favicon. This is where you guys can upload logos for your websites. And if you guys want to upload a favicon, which is this little symbol up here, this is where you guys can upload them. If you guys do need a logo, there is a link in the description below of this video to fiverr.com. Fiverr.com is a website where you guys can get a logo for your business or you can get help for your websites. So over here, I'll just type in logo. So here you guys will see that they have logos that they'll make you guys for like 10 bucks. I recommend using these logos because if you guys go to those free websites, you legally cannot use those logos because you cannot copyright them, right? So they're basically a complete waste of time and they're just for demo purposes, right? Here we have header. Now these options are saying, do you want to show a submit listing button in the header? Do you want to show the login menu in the header? Now, in order to see this, you must be logged out. So here I'm currently logged out of the website and at the top right here, you'll see submit property, sign up and also login. If you guys want those, you want to make sure that you have yes enabled. If you don't, you can just go ahead and uncheck those and disable those options. Now, another very important option in the general section is under the header. So in the header, the modal image is the image that users see when they try to log in on your website. So over here, I'm logged out of the website and up here, I'll click on sign up and then you'll see this image right here on the right side. So that's the modal image. So that's the image that represents this image on the register page. So all you gotta do is just upload one of these images right here. So I'll just go ahead and use this image over here. Okay, so I'll use this image and then I'll click on save changes. And then back on the website, I'll then click on sign up again. And then you'll see we have this picture of this woman right here. So that's how you guys can adjust the image on the login and register page. Now, a very important option that I do wanna quickly talk about is the Google map. So if you guys do want to select a global option, you can do that. For example, over here, I'll put theme slider and I'll click on save changes. If I go back to the websites and I refresh the page, you guys will now see that this now is a default header for all the pages that we create on the website. So this is a global option. I would recommend turning this off just because you guys can always set header types on the pages individually instead of having the global option here. So I would personally select this to none. And you guys can also do this for the taximony pages, for the blog pages, and for all these other various pages. But quite personally, like I just mentioned, I would select this to none, just because you can always do it individually on the page settings. Okay, and then there's some other general options here where you can add transparent menu, uh, a wide header, and then other options like a sticky mobile header if you guys do want to adjust those. But I think this section right here is probably the most important right here. Also for the header type, if you guys do want to change like your header over here, you guys can go ahead and do that. They have one style and this is the second style. So you'll see here at the top how it's now like a, a different style, right? They put the menu right here and they put the logo in the middle, right? But I do like type one. I think type one's actually much better. So now if I refresh the page, it'll adjust back to type one, okay? All right, so that is the header. Next we have the footer. 
So the footer is the bottom part of your website. So if you go over here to the bottom, this is currently the footer. We will talk more about widgets a little bit later where we can assign widgets to each specific column. But uh, for example, here I'll put uh, copyright darylwilson.com. You guys can upload a background for the footer. Here we have some other options, but I think this one is actually the most important and this is three columns. So we will be creating widgets a little bit later, but uh, here there's three columns. If you guys do wanna create more columns, like four equal columns, I'll click on four. And then over here, I'll refresh the page. And then you'll see there's a space for another widgets. And we're gonna add one in just a little bit, right? So I'll go ahead and select four for now and we'll come back to the widgets just in a little bit. Okay, so that is the footer. Here we have price and currency. If you guys do wanna adjust the prices and the currency on your website, this is where you're gonna do it. So this is the dollar, right? You can change the currency here. They also have some APIs for xc.com. I have no idea about this, guys. So if you guys are you know, uh, familiar with that, you guys can knock yourself out, but you guys can always change the currency right here on your websites. The next is the booking settings. So here we can go ahead and change the booking type. So we have per day for all listings, per hour, or they can go ahead and let the owner select per hour or per day. This is very crucial if you guys are listing things for the hour. If you guys are selecting on something like a rental or a hotel or a Airbnb, you definitely wanna select day because I think that's what most people uh, book by, right? So the next is select weekend days. This is very important if you guys do actually have different prices for the weekends. And I would definitely recommend selecting uh, Sunday and Saturday because those are the weekend days. Friday is not a weekend day, right? That's just a weekday. So I would definitely select Sunday and Saturday. Here are some date formats. You guys can also enable the guest control, which enables the adults, children, and infants option. And here we have the max number of guests and max number of nights and just some other general options. Now this option right here is called custom fields. And this will essentially allow you to add custom fields for people who are listing on your website. So over here, I created some demo contents, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change this to something like dog and then I'll put dogs, right? And then I'll click on save changes. Now this is going to appear when people actually create listings on your websites. Let me go ahead and show you. So up here, I'll go to plus new and go to listing. And I'm gonna scroll down. Now over here, I believe it's under the property specific details. If I scroll down, you're gonna see there's a section for dogs, right? This is important if you guys do want to ask more information or you want to showcase more information about the specific property. And you guys can be very informative with the options right here. Okay, so that is what the custom fields are referring to. Essentially, it allows users to select more options when they are creating listings. So next we have the features and amenities. If you guys do want to actually turn this on or off, you guys can say yes, or you guys can select no. Next, we have listing labels. I would leave this standard, but if you guys do wanna change the actual labels when people are creating stuff on your website, you can do that. For example, you can change like, you know, property address to address is whatever, you know, but uh, I think this is a little too uh, detailed and I think these are just fine actually. Next we have theme slider. If you guys do wanna showcase specific properties on your theme slider, this is where you're going to design it. So let me go ahead and show you guys. So right here, I have activated the header on the taximony pages. And here you can see that we can scroll through specific properties. Now this is where you can control where you want these properties to show. So over here we have the Santa Clarita one. I can save that. And if I refresh the page, we will then have the option to actually see the one in Santa Clarita, which is right here, right? So now there's five right here, right? So you see that? So you can add as many as you want, or you can you know, take some out and stuff like that. They also have a second design, right? But I think all it really does is move the options around. So this is design one, and this is design two. So all it does is just move the little uh, circle thingies, I guess you wanna call it right here. So yeah, it moves it from over there to, to the bottom right here, right? So not too much of a difference, right? So uh, I'm gonna go with type one. It's not too, uh, you know, it's not too different, so yeah. So that is the theme slider, and that's where you guys can design it. The next is splash page. I'm gonna skip splash page because this is a depreciated option. It really doesn't really matter as much anymore because we have the page builder now, so we're not gonna use this. All right, so sad. Next we have listing and owner links. 
This is again, just permalinks. If you guys wanna adjust your permalinks, you guys can do that right here, but I don't recommend you guys do that because we already selected post name in the theme options. Here we have login and register, and this is if you guys do want to design and customize your login and register page. So here users can type the password on the registration form, yes. You can enable phone numbers on the registration form. I actually recommend yes, because if they really are selling on your websites, you know, and they're leasing properties, you probably should have their phone number, you know, this is, this is you know, pretty big, right? So I would go ahead and put yes. So the next option is redirect users to a page after login. And I actually do recommend that you guys select something. So if someone actually logs into your website, what page do you want them to go to? Well, probably your dashboard, right? So over here, I'm gonna go to my profile and I'll click on dashboard. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this link right here. So I want users to access this page when they actually sign up and register on my websites. Over here, I'll go ahead and just paste that in. So the next is separate users on registration. If you guys actually select yes, there will be two types of users where people can book and people who can also rent and book. Let me go ahead and show you. So I'm over here on my websites and up here, I'll click on sign up. And here's the option. And I do recommend that you guys actually select this because this will really categorize the users. So here we have users who want to book on the website and people who want to rent out their property. Pretty big difference. So I'd definitely recommend to select that option to yes. So that is pretty much it for the general options. As you guys can tell, some of them are pretty important, right? But I think the most important one is the header options, the search results pages, and probably the custom fields. Next, let's go over here and click on the social and contact. So the next is the contact page details. And this is where you guys can adjust the contact page. Now this only applies if you guys decide to use the actual templates for the theme. So I do recommend that you guys change this if you guys do want to use the theme defaults for your contact page. We did talk about that a little bit earlier, right? So this is where you can adjust the contact page for your website. Social accounts, this is where you guys can add in your social accounts. This will appear at the bottom of your websites, right? So over here. So here at the bottom, you'll see social links, and this is where these options will be applied. So when we add in widgets, you'll see that you can add in those social links here, and that's where they will be linked to. So next we have social login, and this is where users can actually log in on your website via social media like Facebook or Google. So I'll go ahead and open up my website over here. And what I'll do is I'll refresh the page and I'll click on sign up. And now you'll see there's an option for login with Facebook, Google, and also Twitter. Now, usually my videos, I recommend for people to actually uh, do it themselves and I show you guys, but I definitely recommend going over here to fiverr.com. These guys can actually integrate social login for you for like $5, right? So social login. And the reason why I recommend this is not because I don't know how to do it. It's just because they constantly change their interface and my videos get outdated and I get nasty comments. So I'm just gonna say, you know what? Check out fiverr.com, right? I have a, a discount code for this website in the description, right? So you guys can go ahead and check out this website, fiverr.com, where they will integrate the social login for you guys. Okay, all right. And then also over here, they have the Twitter login and widgets, and this is where you can enter in your credentials. Next, we have the map. And this is where we can enable OpenStreet or also Google Maps and Google Places. I will be showing you guys how to integrate Google Maps at the end of the video, but for now we're gonna skip it and you guys can just use OpenStreet for now. Okay, so next we have listing page settings and these are actually pretty important options. And this is where you guys can design and decorate your listing page. Now I do want to actually take a step back here and let you guys know that you guys can actually adjust this on the front end with a theme customizer. So these options right here that I'm showing you guys are also available in the front end. So right here, I'll click on customize and this will enable the theme customizer. So right here we have general, social and map, right? General, social and map. So they are the same exact options. And if you guys do want to design your listing page, I do recommend to use the front end. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll go ahead and click on search and I'll click on a property. And now right here in our listing page, we can actually design this. So I like this format better because we can actually see what we're doing, right? So listing page settings, we have type four, type one, type two, type three, also like type one, okay? And then you'll see that this changes, right? So the video is up front right here, which is pretty cool, right? Let's go and take a look at type three. All right, type three, they added in these like three columns right here. Then we also have type five. So this is type five and it adds a little bit of elegance here. You can see that they've created this gap right here and padding in between the images. 
So the next option is the show contact form instead. If you guys don't want people to book on your website, you can actually just click on yes right here. And then this will change from book now to send a message. If you guys do want to enable the terms checkbox, you guys can select yes. And this will basically prompt them to agree to the terms and conditions when they actually book on your websites. And then there's other options where you can hide the map location if you don't want to show the map. And then you can also show minimum nights in available calendar. Okay. So that is pretty much it for the listing page settings. It does give you options where you guys can adjust it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. Now this option right here, you guys can't really edit it from here. So I'm gonna go back to the back ends and I'll explain it. Okay. So here we have listing page layout manager. And I want to first enable this and then I'll click on save changes. Now, before we use the layout manager, you guys can actually hide specific sections. You can hide the description, you can hide the owner details, the default map, and also similar listings. For example, here I'll click on yes to hide the similar listings. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that we have this section right here, right? So I can go ahead and say, I want to hide that. And then if I save changes and I refresh the page, you'll see it's now gone. I can also do this for the owner section as well. So over here, I want to hide the owner section. Here, I'll click on save changes. I'll refresh the page. And then the owner section is also gone there as well. But really quickly, if you guys do want to readjust the property page layout, you guys can do that right here. So for example, if you want the pricing details at the top, we can put that at the top. If you want to hide something like the address, I'll say, you know, I want to disable the address. So I do not want the address to show up. Now there's one very important thing that you guys should know about the layout manager. This only works for type one, okay? So these other ones, it doesn't really work with because they're pre-built and I guess for type one, this is where you can fully design it, right? Okay, so just to clarify, this only works with type one. Now here you'll see that I added price details at the top and I disabled the address. So over here's my listing. You'll see price details here is at the top now. And if we scroll down, you'll see that the address information is gone, right? Let's say, for example, I want to disable this map right here. So over here, I'll take the map and I'll also disable this as well and click on save changes. Here, I'll go ahead and refresh the page. And then you'll see that it's completely gone, right? So the map is now gone and users cannot uh, see it no more. So if you guys do want to go ahead and use the layout manager, you guys can go ahead and go that route and design your property page. And the last option is the sticky sidebar. So if you guys do want to have the sticky sidebar option, you guys can keep it checked to yes. If you want to disable the sticky sidebar, you can just click on no, and that will disable the sticky sidebar. But I do think it's actually pretty cool. And I think even Airbnb uses that. So let's just keep that on. Next, we have the design area. If you guys do want to actually upload your own icons right here. You guys can go ahead and do that. So for example, here, I'll change this icon to this little uh, AD. And for the field, I'll go ahead and select property bedrooms. Okay. And then I'll click on save changes. So over here, you'll see we have the bedrooms icon, right? And if I refresh the page, you'll see now that it's using our other icon right here. So if you guys do want to use this, you'll have to go and you'll have to add in all of the fields, right? And then you can you know, you can even add in your own image if you want. All you got to do is copy and paste. So if you guys do want to create your own custom icons, you'll need to go ahead and fill out all these fields right here. And then you'll just go ahead and upload your uh, icon. Also, if you want to upload your own icon here in the image, all you got to do is put in the image URL for your media. So over here, I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Over here in our media, I'll go to library. And let's just say I want to use this icon right here, right? So I'm going to copy and paste this URL. So you'll need to upload your, you know, your image and stuff like that. And then you'll just go back to your general settings. And then over here, I'll just go ahead and select rooms, right? And then I'll just paste the image there, right? And for that, I'll click on save. And then I'll come back over here and I'll refresh the page. And then you'll see that my icon now appears, right? Okay, so that is the custom icon area summed up. I'm going to select no, because I think the theme did a really good job at actually labeling all the icons for us, but it's nice to know that you have that customization. Next, we have disclaimer. If you guys do want to add a disclaimer, you can go ahead and add a disclaimer right here. Similar listings. This is the similar listings that appear at the bottom of your listing page. So if you guys want to, uh, you know, put in specific properties or you want to add in a specific category like city or area, this is where you guys can do it.
Okay. Okay, so next we have the listing card design, and this is actually pretty important as well. So if we go over here to our websites and we actually do a quick search, we can actually design the actual cards that appear in the search results. So this right here is what we can design, okay? So over here, I'll select type one, click on save changes, and then I'll refresh the page. And you'll see now it's a little bit different, right? So, you know, it changes a little bit. And here is where you can probably add in like the owner and stuff like that. Over here, we'll select type four, right? Refresh the page. And I think it looks a little, oh, we got the little add to favorites. So it's, it's somewhat different, you know, it's a little bit different, cool. And the next one is the property page and new tab. I definitely recommend selecting that to yes, because that will actually open the property up in a new tab. And then these are the other styling options. You know, you can change this to a list grid, right? A list or a, just a grid. So for example, if I refresh the page, it'll change it to like a list, right? Pretty cool. You know, it's actually kind of cute, you know? So you guys can go ahead and adjust this on your own free time. Now these other options here are just miscellaneous options. If you want to have custom colors on your websites, I think the more important option is the main menu design. Here is where you guys can actually apply the colors for your actual menu at the top of your website. So if you do want to have like a, a specific color for your menu, here I'll click on this, uh, I guess this, I don't know what that is, like an orange or something, right? I'll refresh the page. And now there's this orange color, okay? So these are just referring to the main menu design and you'll just need to go through these and design it to your liking. And then also this is for the mobile menu. So people who visit your website on a mobile device, you can also change the colors for people visiting your website on a phone, okay? Here's custom CSS, which we're not gonna cover. And then also we have fonts. If you guys do wanna adjust the fonts on your website, this is where you guys can do it at. Uh, this will actually appear on most of your website, like the listing pages and also the menu, right? So I'm gonna change this to Poppins. That's the, that is the number one font. All right, pop-ins, and I want this bold, right? So I'll go ahead and save the changes. And over here, if I refresh the page, you'll now see that there is pop-ins all over the website, right? So we have pop-ins and everything looks really cool. So over here, I'll click on the listing and you'll see all this has changed to the pop-ins font, okay? So that is a pretty important option and the font really truly represents the culture of your website. So you need to go through here and adjust the like the H1, H2, and H3 fonts and adjust all these right here to fit your liking. If you guys are not sure where these showcase, it's hard to actually tell where they actually showcase because the developer actually puts these all over the websites. Like right here, I think this is H2, all right? Let's take a look here, I'll inspect the element. So this is actually H4. So if you click on inspect the element, you'll see that this is an H4 class, right? So over here, if I, go to H4, this is where I can change that specific font. So I'll go ahead and now I'll refresh the page. And then you'll see that specific font changes. So if you guys don't know where it changes, all you gotta do is inspect the elements and find out where it changes. Over here, same thing. I'll inspect this. And this is an H3 tag, right? So we have an H3 over here. So over here, I'll go ahead and change this to like Bookman and then I'll refresh the page. And then you'll see it changes the font right there, right? Okay, so that is the fonts all summed up, right? And that is pretty much for the design section. Next, we have email management. Email management is where you guys can design the emails coming from your websites. And for example, here we have subject for new user. So if someone signs up to your website, this is the subject headline. Here is the content for a new user notification. So people who log in on your websites, uh, they'll be sent this little form right here. And you guys can add in like, you know, images, you can, you know, uh, you know, add in more like awesome. And this will be sent when people register on your websites. Here we also have the subject for new user notification and also new user admin. I'm not really sure why they have that. That's for admins only, right? But we are the only admin on the websites. So if you wanna add more, well, you can customize that email too, right? So on your own free time, feel free to go to the email management and adjust all this to your liking. And then once you're done, you'll just click on save changes. 
So next we have email settings, and I did recommend to watch my video, and I do recommend to actually create a business email and then put your business email here, just because you don't want it to you know, showcase WP Estates or WP uh, Rentals.com, right? So here I put howdy at Daryl Wilson tutorial.com, which is my actual business email I made. And then here you can upload your email logo. And this is very important, right? And then you can also adjust like the footer contents and then social icons and just some other miscellaneous options. But make sure that you guys do actually adjust all this because it's going to use the demo content if you guys do nothing, okay? All right, let's go ahead now and click on save changes. If you guys do want to showcase the trip details in the email, just go ahead and leave yes, which I think is standard for most people booking on your website. Here we have the advanced option. If you guys do want to import these settings onto another website, this is where you guys can do it. Okay, and the next is the reCAPTCHA settings. If you guys do want to turn on reCAPTCHA, I do recommend it. All you got to do is click on yes right here, and then just go ahead and sign up with a, a free reCAPTCHA code. And all you got to do is copy and paste the API right here. It's really simple. I do have a video that shows you guys how to do it in my other tutorial, but all you got to do is just sign up and then just click on reCAPTCHA and just paste those credentials there. Here you have Yelp settings. If you guys do have a Yelp account and you want to integrate the API, this is where you guys can do it. Okay, so next we have the listing submit page and this will actually adjust some of the options on your property page right here. The first one is the option to change this to a vacation rental to an object rental. So essentially what that means is here you're basically saying you can rent something per night. If you change this to object, it's basically saying like you can change this to something where people would rent it, right? like on a per basis. So over here, I'll refresh the page and it changes it from 100 per night to 100 per day, right? So it just changes it from like, kind of like a hotel to just like maybe like a car rental or something like that. Okay, and the next is the show the guest dropdown. Now this option, you need to meet specific conditions in order for it to work. And there are several things you need to adjust in your settings. Now what I'm gonna do here is, I'm actually just gonna refer you to their documentation. It's about a four minute video and it actually shows you where you can enable guests here as a dropdown. Um, the reason why I'm not showing you guys is because there's a lot of options you need to change in the general settings and you need to go back and forth. And I just don't wanna do that because this option is really not for that many people. But if you do wanna have the guest dropdown option available, I will leave this video right here in the description below this video for you guys to check out. So the next is show cities and areas as dropdowns. When people are creating listings on your website, they can actually uh, select a location as a dropdown when they are listing something on your website. The next is select the field for listing submission. Now these are the options that you want users to be able to check out or select when they are creating something. So for example, right here you'll see that I did not list dogs. So let's go ahead and take a look at our listing. So over here in the specific details, you guys will see that there is no area over here where we can select dogs, right? So what I can do over here is go ahead and select dogs along with all these other ones, right? I'll just go ahead and select all of them and then click on save changes. And if I go over here and I refresh the page, and then right here, you'll see that we have dogs available, right? So essentially it allows users to submit this info when they're creating listings on your websites. And you guys can actually make these mandatory. So if you want specific ones mandatory, you can go ahead and select those options right here. So the next is the submit payment settings. We'll come back to monetization at the end of the video, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna create memberships and also per listings. Actually, memberships are already created for us. And all we need to do here is just adjust some of these general options like the currency and you know just some small miscellaneous options. But I'll show you guys how to integrate payment gateways near the end of the video. The same thing with WooCommerce. If you guys do want to enable WooCommerce on your websites to enable payment gateways, you guys can also do that here, but I'll be showing you guys more about this in the monetization section of this video. Same thing right here. We're gonna go ahead and skip the PayPal settings and Stripe. Next, let's go ahead and click on search. So if you guys do want to enable the advanced search on your websites using the theme settings, you guys can turn that on or off right here. And then you guys can also adjust the options for the advanced search right here. The next is the advanced search form. So you guys can actually go ahead and adjust this to many different styles. So here we have the advanced search form, right? But we can go ahead and change that to like type one and it changes it like that. So there are various styles that you guys can choose from. So there's type four, right? I'll refresh the page and there is type four, right? 
So yeah, you guys can go to those options and decorate them and design them any which way you want. Here you guys can also choose to like add in amenities for the advanced search. So for example, I'll go back over here and then you'll see that we have these amenities. So right here, if I click on search more, you'll see that we have the option to select amenities. Now these options, they vary depending on which type you select. So I believe for like type one, I don't think there's an option to actually select amenities anywhere. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Yeah, so there's no option. So um, the developer didn't do a good job here at telling us where these conditions must be met. So I believe for type three and four, amenities can be selected and that's where these options would then be available to be selected. So let's go ahead and refresh the page. And then you'll see over here more options and now we can go ahead and select amenities, right? So yeah, you guys will need to go ahead and select the type and then those types will reflect on these settings right here. Now the last option is actually pretty important. Now in order for this to be met, you must select type three, four, and five. After you guys do that, you guys can adjust the actual search field, right? So for example, instead of location, I can put price. Here I'll click on save changes. And if I go back over here and I refresh the page, you'll now see that price is the first thing that shows up. So then we have price, check-in and check-out, right? We also have price again at the bottom and that's because we have price twice right here. So what I'll do here is I'll just put uh, state, you know, I don't know, mix it up, right? And then for price here instead, I'll go ahead and put, uh, what should we do here, guys? Uh, we'll do cities, right? So we'll change, change that to cities. And if I go over here and I refresh the page, you'll then see we have the location. And then at the end, we do have the option for states right there, right? So, and then over here, we need to also adjust the label on the front end to size. And the same thing over here for cities, right? Cities, save changes. And there we go. So we have size, right? Where they can select the square feet. And then over here, they can also select the cities that we have actually created, right? So you guys can use this to get a little bit more customizable. And I do like this because this gives you more flexibility in order to design the search filter. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the advanced search filter. Next, let's click on the half map search. And this applies to the map right here. So you guys can also custom design these filters right here by using this section right here, the half map search form. And of course, I showed you guys how to do this earlier. So all you gotta do is select what you guys want. If you guys do want to adjust the advanced search filter on the half map page. So next we have the geolocation. And this is essentially where you guys can showcase the locations over here on the map. You guys can actually turn this on or off if you guys want to adjust that. Next is the advanced search form position. Now these will actually be met if specific conditions are met. For example, you guys can use the float search form if you guys have a media header only, okay? You guys can also use a sticky search on all of the headers except for type one, okay? So you guys will need to go through these options and just read them, right? But I'm not gonna go through these because I don't want to go into every single one. Obviously you guys can just get the feel of this just by reading the instructions, okay? Next is the SMS notifications. If you guys do want to enable SMS notifications, you guys can use this website where you can send out text messages to your customers. But I don't really know too much about this website, so you guys can go ahead and check it out right here by clicking on this link and learning more about their websites. Here we have the help. If you guys do want to enable a WP Estate fan, you guys can say yes or no, which will give a little cool little thing there at the footer of the website. But I'm gonna put no and then click on save changes. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the theme options. So feel free to go through these theme options, get comfortable with them. And after probably just like an hour, you guys will definitely get the hang of all these options. There are some that you guys might need to go through like the email management where you'll need to go through all these emails and adjust it and stuff like that. So now that we have adjusted the theme settings, now let's go ahead and dive into the widgets and where these reflect on your websites. Okay, so in this part of the video, we'll be talking about widgets on your website. Now widgets are located on the right side of the page on your listing. They're also located on your blog and on other various parts of the website. So here right here, you'll see recent comments, you'll see recent posts, and you'll see this little advanced search and then this dashboard right here. So I'll show you guys how to adjust this. It's really simple actually. So let's go over here to our websites and we're gonna go over here and we're first gonna click on widgets under the bar right here. Okay, now I'm gonna collapse this. 
Now there's various uh, widget areas, right? There's primary widget area one, there's two, and then there's the footer, right? Remember earlier how we set the footer widgets, right? So let's just first go with the basics and do the primary widget area. Now the primary widget area is referring to this right sidebar here on the property page. So we have the search, recent posts, and then recent comments, right? Let's go back over here. So I'm gonna open this. We have the search, recent posts, and recent comments. Now we need to delete these because these have no relevance to our listing page, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the three dots and click on delete. Same thing here, delete. All right, I'm gonna delete this. I'll delete this too, and then I'll also delete this one right here, okay? Now, what we can do here is we can add in our own widgets, right? So up here under this plus icon, I'll click on the plus, and I'm gonna scroll down. Now you guys can add these widgets on the right side and widgets are just like little gadgets, right? You can add like a, you know, a menu, you can add social icons, you can add a page list, uh, latest posts, whatever. But the WP Rentals plugin actually has their own widgets right here. So you'll see WP Estates, right? And this is actually referring to the rentals. So here they have like the latest listings, right? I'll go ahead and put this one in. And then you'll see, we can go ahead and pick which listings, but I'll just go ahead and put like all of them, right? It's only gonna list three right here, right? So latest listings, okay. I'll scroll down and then you're gonna see latest listings. Like, you know, you're gonna see it propagate. So I, I know this is not the best editor, right? But uh, once you guys actually close this, it'll actually look a lot nicer. Uh, below that, we have the advanced search. I'm just gonna get rid of this. I don't want the advanced search, right? And also log in and register. We're gonna get rid of this one here as well. Okay, and also oh, we have two latest listings. I'll just delete this one. And then we can add in another one right here, right? So I'll go ahead and add in another widgets latest listings and then maybe we can add in something else like uh we can add in like the uh a facebook box right you can add like a facebook like box over here i'll put in featured listings and now it's asking for a property id so over here under the listings you'll see that there's id so i can just go ahead and copy this and i'll go ahead and paste this id over here right so it's going to showcase the uh, property that we created earlier so i'll go ahead and publish this Okay, so I only have two widgets now. I have the latest listings and I have the featured listings, right? So if I go over here and I refresh the page and I click on a property, let's take a look now. We'll scroll down and now you'll see we have latest listings on the right side, right? And then also we have the featured one, which is the Santa Clarita home, which looks really, really nice. So that's how you guys can apply widgets on your website. You guys can just go through these and you know add quite a few. So. Uh, over here, you'll just go ahead and add any widgets you want. And that's how you guys can design and decorate that part of the website. So next we have the footer. So let me show you guys how to also design the footer. So over here we have primary widget area, right? But we scroll down, you're gonna see footer one, footer two, footer three, and footer four. So remember earlier how we selected the columns? So here we have column one, column two, column three, and column four. So what I'm gonna do over here is go to the fourth footer widget and I'm gonna add in something, right? All right, and I'll go ahead and add in maybe like a calendar, you know, I don't know, calendar, right? Throw in a calendar, okay. And then I'll click on update. I'll go over here and I'll refresh the page. And there is our calendar, right? So this was actually set, remember in the theme settings, we selected a four column row, right? So you guys can go over here and just grab any widget that you guys want. They do have many to choose from, right? And again, a lot of this is just trial and error. You guys can even use like an AdSense code or you can place an image, right? So I'll put in like an image, right? And then I'll use like a media library here. I'll click on this and I'll just like uh, showcase a really cool looking property. So here's the image and I'll go ahead and add something else, right? I'll put in a heading. Check this out. Watch this trick, guys. Here, I'm gonna put buy this. And I'll put this above the image. And now for this one, I can insert a link right here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on the link and I will click on the link right here. And then I'll find a property, right? I'll just grab this one. I'll grab this link right here, right? And then I'll just paste that link in there, right? Okay, here I'll apply it and then I'll update. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to like upsell this other property, right? So now I'll go ahead and refresh the page. 
And then you'll see buy this. And then right here, I can click on this little image and it'll take me to that specific property. So there's various ways on how you guys can get customizable with the uh, widget section, right? So that's how you guys can design the footer and then also the primary area, which is the listing page. Okay, so that is pretty much widget summed up. So remember, widgets are basically going to propagate on parts of your websites, like the blog page, the listing page, and also the footer. Now, really quick, let's go over here to general. So right here under general and appearance, here you guys can actually assign specific widgets to specific areas. For example, for the blog category and the archive sidebar, you guys can actually assign the secondary widget area instead of the primary, right? So you can assign specific uh, widget areas to specific parts of your websites. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. If you guys do have any questions about widgets or anything else, let me know in the comments below. And with that said, let's go to the next section. Okay, so now that we know about the theme options and we know how to design the website using the drag and drop page builder, now let's talk about the next section, which is making money and monetization. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to integrate various payment gateways so users can come to your website and enter in their credit card or even check out PayPal on your websites. I'll also be showing you guys how to integrate other various payment gateways just in case you guys are from uh, countries where maybe Stripe is not supported, right? And I'll also show you guys how to integrate the pay per listing model and also how to apply memberships so you can start taking subscription payments on your rental websites. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, guys, in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to monetize your websites so people can pay you per listing. So let's get started. Now, the very first thing that you guys need to do is you need to make sure that you actually have a page propagated for your Stripe and your PayPal uh, processing. So over here under plus new page under templates, you're going to see default templates. You want to make sure that you guys actually have these pages created because these are the pages that are going to propagate when people try to purchase something on your website. You want to make sure that you actually have the Stripe charge page created, right? So you need to make sure this one is created and also the PayPal processor. Now people are not going to be able to access these pages. So this is only if they purchase something, right? So it's not something that they'll have access to on a regular basis, but you need this for internal purposes. So make sure that you guys do create the Stripe page and also the uh, PayPal processor page. I believe that is the only page that you guys need. You guys also might need these subscriptions pages if you guys do want to run subscriptions, right? So you do want to make sure that you create that as well. Okay, so once you've created those pages, now let's go ahead and go back to the dashboard. All right, so the first thing is over here under options, let's go ahead and click on general. Next, I'll click on submit and payments. And here we have the payment section. So right here, I'll click on submission payment settings. Now there's two ways you guys can monetize your website. We have per listing and then we have membership. Per listing is essentially charging people for every single listing, right? Membership is charging people on a monthly basis to post a specific amount of properties. So to get started with, let's just do per listing. I think that's what most websites do today, right? So price per listing. So how much does this actually cost? Well, I'm gonna put $1. Now the next option is price to make this featured. Featured is essentially making it listed at the top of the search results. So over here on my search results, you guys will see that there's this featured banner. Now featured banners will appear at the top of the results so people can always view them first so there's better chances of them getting rented. So you guys can actually charge for that, right? So you can charge something like another dollar to make it featured, right? Now Sandbox is just testing and live is actually live mode, right? So you wanna make sure you select live. So next is the submitted listing should be approved. So you guys can choose yes if you wanna approve them or no if you want them auto approved. But I do recommend that you guys select yes just because you do want to be able to check them out before they're listed on your websites. The next is the currency. You guys can go ahead and select your currency here, right? Okay. The next one is enable direct payment and wire. I don't recommend doing this because I think this is a very outdated way of you know accepting payments. If you guys do want to accept wires, you can leave that selected to yes, but I'm gonna turn this to off right here. So I'm gonna put no. You guys can also enter your own currency symbol if you want to go that route. So now I'll click on save changes. All right, now the next option is the WooCommerce settings. Now we're gonna come back to this last, but WooCommerce is a e-commerce payment gateway that you guys can use to integrate other various payment gateways. It is helpful because it does give you access to more payment gateways, but we're gonna first start with Stripe and PayPal, and then we'll come back to WooCommerce settings a little bit later. Next, we have the booking payment options. So if you guys do wanna charge specific extra fees or booking deposits or service fees, this is where you're going to do it at. 
So for example, you guys can charge a deposit fee, you can charge a fixed value fee, right? And then the same thing for a booking fee or a fixed value service fee. The difference between this one is this is a percentage and this is a fixed amount. So for example, this would be like a 10% fee, right? Or you can charge $10, right? So there's a huge difference between these. So you guys can charge a percentage or a fee, but I think most websites charge a fee, right? So what I'll do here is I'll just charge a $1 service fee, right? For booking, you know, because I wanna make money too, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and charge them $1 for a service fee. And then I'll click on save changes. Okay. So now let's integrate the payment gateways. So there's two payment gateways we're gonna integrate. We are gonna integrate PayPal and we're also gonna integrate Stripe. Stripe.com is a free payment gateway. It's free to get started. There's no credit check whatsoever. You guys can make an account. All you guys need to do is just have a bank account and they will uh, let you be a customer. They do have a small transaction fee, but I think that's standard for most businesses. And then we're gonna integrate PayPal. PayPal is actually a pretty popular payment gateway. It's used worldwide. So I'll be showing you guys how to integrate payment gateways with PayPal in this part of the video. All right, so let's go back over here and let's integrate some payment gateways. So the first payment gateway is PayPal. So over here, I'll click on yes. And now I want to grab some credentials. So I need the PayPal secret key and also the client ID. Now, just remember that you guys must have a PayPal business account in order for this to work. PayPal business accounts are now free, so they don't cost you anything. So all you gotta do is just go to paypal.com and then sign up and make a business account. Once you guys do that, you guys will have access to the developer tools. I'm gonna quickly log in right here. Okay, so this is the developer.paypal.com. And once you guys do get here, all you gotta do is click on abstract credentials and then we're just gonna create an app. So the next thing we'll do is we're now gonna click on live because remember, I want live credentials, right? So right here, I'll click on create an app. And then this will be like the Airbnb website. And then I'll click on create an app. Okay, so that's pretty much it. All I gotta do now is copy and paste this information. So here is my client ID. I'll copy this. I'll go over here and I'll paste this, right? And then here is the secret key. So I'm gonna go ahead and view this. We're going to also copy this, right? And then I'll put in my PayPal email. And then I'll click on save changes and that is it. Our PayPal account is now fully integrated with the website. So now we can start taking payments using PayPal. Okay, so now we're gonna integrate stripe.com. So right here, I'll click on yes. And now let's go to our Stripe account. Now just remember that you guys must go ahead and make an account with Stripe. You'll verify your account, connect your bank account. And once you guys do that, it'll bring you to your customer dashboard. So you guys will see right here that we do actually make quite a bit of money. I actually do use this service, right, for my business. So, you know, over the last three months, we've made around $25,000. We're doing pretty well for ourselves. So it's a great service and they deposit everything directly right into your bank account. At the top left, I'll click on the demo business and we're gonna show you guys how to do this using the demo account. Now, the very first thing we're gonna do is at the top right here, we'll click on developers. We're then gonna click on API keys. Here is a publishable key. We're just gonna copy and paste this onto the website. So I'll go back over here and I'll go ahead and paste this under the secret key, right? Next, we're going to go over here and click on create a secret key. So for my key name, I'll put Airbnb. And then I'll copy this and that's it. Then we'll go over here and we'll paste the secret key, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to enable the webhook secrets. Now, before we go there, I want you guys to click on save changes because we're gonna have to go to a part of the website. So over here, let's go back to the dashboard. You guys might wanna open up a new tab just to make sure those keys don't get erased. And we need to actually copy and paste a URL. So over here, all pages, and we're gonna find the Stripe page. So I think it was uh, the last one that we created, right? So you wanna find the Stripe page. I think it's on page three here. And it is right here. So we need to click on edit for the Stripe processor. Okay, and right here, you'll see this URL. We need to make sure that we copy this URL. Okay, this is the URL that we need because remember, we are linking Stripe to this specific page. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you copy and paste this specific URL. And after you do that, let's go back to Stripe. So let's go back over here to the, the dashboard. And now we're gonna paste that URL right here. Okay, so you wanna make sure that that is the same URL. And for the description, you just wanna tell Stripe what you're using this for. So to accept payments. 
don't know why the space doesn't work on my keyboard. I think it's broken. Oh, no, there it goes. Yeah, that's weird. To accept payments. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to click on select events and I'm going to click on select all events. I want this to apply for everything, right? Checking in, charging, refunding, all that stuff. And then I'll click on add events. Once we do that, we'll scroll all the way here to the bottom and then I'll click on add an endpoint. Okay. The next thing is right here, you'll see signing secrets. I'll click on reveal and I'm going to copy this. And then I'll paste that onto the website and we are done. So I'll paste that there. I'll click on save changes. And that's it. We're done. Now we can go ahead and run a few test transactions to see if this actually works or not. All right, so let's do this. So I just visited the website. I'm on a Safari browser. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on submit property. So what I'll do right here is I'll just go ahead and fill out some demo info for this rental property. Okay, so right here you'll see Daryl's house is in the listing section. And on the right side, you'll see publisher upgrade is now available. You'll also see it's waiting for approval and it's not paid. So for users to pay something on your website, all they got to do is click on publisher upgrade. Here they can pay with Stripe or also PayPal. You guys can either turn one on and turn one off to basically put whatever one that you guys want customers to use. But I'll go ahead and use Stripe for now. So I'll click on pay with Stripe. And then you'll see this page pop up right here. So I'll go ahead and fill up my information. So Daryl Wilson, here I'll put in my Daryl at able.com. And then I'll put in my credit card number and then also the month and year. All right, so I went ahead and I submitted the payments and now it's confirming the payment. And that's it, the user has paid and everything is done. So all they need to do now is just go ahead and wait for us to approve it. We can also view this from the admin point of view to see if they paid us. So we're over here back on our websites and all I gotta do is click on invoices. And here is the invoice. So it was confirmed and paid. And we can actually double check this by actually going to the Stripe account to see if the money has actually reached our account. And there you go, $1. You'll see $1 has been uh, successfully uh, paid and there's the payments. So we have fully integrated Stripe and also PayPal. They're very convenient payment processors. As you can tell, it's a very smooth checkout process. So if you guys have any questions about that, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I showed you guys earlier how to create listings. Now let's talk about memberships. If you guys do wanna incorporate memberships on your website where you can charge people by a subscription, I'll be showing you guys how to do that. Here you see we have five subscriptions, right? We have the basic one, we have bronze, gold, diamond, you know, and this one and so on and so forth. You'll see that each package offers specific features. So this one offers three listings and three featured. This one offers 10 listings and two featured. Here is unlimited listings and then 10 featured. So earlier we did show you guys the featured, so you can include those in your packages. So let me show you guys how to add memberships to your website. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we need to create a page for the memberships. So up here, plus new and page. And on the template section, you need to make sure that you actually have these subscriptions available. So right here, you need to make sure that you have these subscriptions available or people cannot purchase subscriptions. Okay, so you'll go ahead and, you know, put in like subscriptions. And then you'll go ahead and publish the page. And that'll create the templates for people to purchase subscriptions on your website. Once you guys do that, we can go ahead and create some subscriptions. So let's go back here. And over here, I'll click on membership packages. Now the theme did a pretty good job at creating packages. So here are five different packages that we saw earlier. If you guys do wanna create a package, all you gotta do is click on add new membership package and then you can create your own package. So the first is the billing time. You can charge people by the day, the week, the month or the year. You could probably create two different packages, right? One on a monthly basis and then one on a yearly basis. And then you can build them every month, right? So once a month right here. How many listings are included? So this is basically saying how many listings can they post on your websites? Well, I'll say 10. If you want to allow unlimited listings, you just have to select unlimited listings right there. How many featured listings? Here they can go ahead and select the featured listings from their backends. Now, how much does this package cost? Well, I'll just say $1, right? And also make sure to give your package a name. So I'll put Daryl Wilson package. Essentially, this is a subscription, not really a package, right? Now, the next thing it's asking us is for a Stripe ID. So before we go on any further, let's just go ahead and save this as draft. Okay, 
Now we need to go to our Stripe account and we need to create a membership package. So let's do that. So next we need to go to our Stripe account and we need to create a membership package. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to plus more right here and then we're going to go to the product catalog. Next, we're gonna go ahead and click on add a product. Okay, and right here, we're gonna put Daryl's package, right? Daryl Wilson's package. And this grants one month subscription for rental websites. You guys can also choose to give this an image if you guys want to, and they're gonna see this when they check out through Stripe. So I'll just put in a little image here, right? All right, 92 basically let Stripe know what you're using this for. So I'm just going to leave it as electronic supplied services. So here we selected recurring and then we're gonna put the price. So this is gonna be the price for your subscription. I'll just put $1. Is there tax included? I'm gonna put no. And then next we have the billing period and we're gonna select monthly. All right, so once you guys select the amount and then the billing period, all you gotta do is click on add a product. All right, and here is our package. Okay, I'll go ahead and click on the package. And what we're gonna need is we're going to need this code right up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this ID right up here. And then we're gonna paste this on our website. So let's go back to our package. And now I'm going to go ahead and paste that ID right there. And then I'll click on publish. And that's it. That's how we can create packages for our websites. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the back end from the customer point of view. All right, and right here, you'll see that uh, we have these packages right here. So we have Daryl Wilson package, and then we have our other various packages. If you want your customers to select a package, all they gotta do is just select the package, and they will make this recurring, and then they can check out with PayPal or even Stripe. So I'll go ahead and click on the subscription for Stripe. And then right here, all we gotta do is fill out our credit card info, and we're all set. All right, so I'll go ahead and purchase this subscription. So I'll click on pay one USD. And that's it. So now you'll see that we have now purchased the package. You'll see on our current subscription, we have all of our stats right here where we have 10 listings, five are included. And then right here, users can go ahead and cancel their subscription at any time. So that's how you guys can create memberships if you guys do wanna add that for your listing website. Now, the next thing I'll show you guys is how to use the WooCommerce Payment Gateway. Now, WooCommerce is an e-commerce platform that is pretty much used for websites like selling product with inventory, but you can also use it for, you know, this website. The good thing about WooCommerce is that it has many various payment gateways. So if Stripe and PayPal are not available in your country, there are many that are available for WooCommerce. So what I'll do over here is click on yes and click on save changes. Now there is a few caveats. If you guys do use WooCommerce, you cannot use the recurring payments for memberships and also PayPal and Stripe will not work. You guys will need to actually use the add-ons for WooCommerce with Stripe and PayPal and I'll show you guys how to do that. So over here, what we're gonna do is under plugins, I'll click on add new plugins and we're gonna type in WooCommerce. Well, I think they changed their name to Woo, right? But I think people still call them WooCommerce. So this is the plugin that you guys need. So I'll click on install now and then I'll click on activate. All right, there's this little notice right here, but I'm gonna skip the setup and I'm just gonna put my country really quick. So I'll put United States, I'll put Wyoming, I'll go to my store. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to install extensions for WooCommerce. So over here, add new plugin, and then we can type in Stripe. So we can still use Stripe and PayPal, we just need to use the WooCommerce payment gateway for it. So right here we have Stripe. So I'll go ahead and activate Stripe. Okay. And then I'll go back to add new plugin. And then over here, I'll type in PayPal. And the very first one is the WooCommerce PayPal payments. I'll click on install now, and then I'll click on activate. All right, add new plugin. Now this is where using WooCommerce might be a little advantageous. So there are many payment gateways that are usable for WooCommerce. One of them is something like Paystack. So if you guys are in Africa and you guys wanna use a payment gateway, you guys can definitely use Paystack. Paystack is quickly becoming the most popular payment gateway in Africa. So if you guys wanna use it, you guys can install this and it fully integrates with WooCommerce. Now I'm not gonna go through the process of showing you guys how to do this because it is a very long process, right? You have to make an account and so on and so forth. But for my viewers in Africa, you guys can use this, sign up, make an account, and then you guys can go from there. Now, if you guys are in South America, you guys can use a plugin called Mercado Pago. 
This is probably the most popular one. So this is it right here, Mercado Pago payments for WooCommerce. This also has a payment gateway, right? So you guys can go ahead and use this. And this is for Central America, South America, and even Mexico, which is considered North America. So you guys can use this. And for the Arabic community, if you guys do want to use a payment gateway, you guys can use a payment gateway called MyFatora. This one's actually becoming quite popular. You guys can use this for most of the Middle Eastern countries. You guys can also use Authorize.net. Authorize.net is probably the most popular one for the Middle East. So you guys can also use this one right here. Stripe and PayPal, they do also work for the Middle East, but not for every single country. So you might want to go check which ones are available, but these two payment gateways work for majority of those countries. Okay. All right. So now that I've shown you guys many of those payment gateways, now I'll show you guys how to use them. So over here under WooCommerce, let's click on settings. And over here, I'll click on payments. Now, right here, you're going to see that there's some options. We can turn on Stripe. We can turn on all these other payment gateways. We also have PayPal and stuff like that. So when you guys do add a payment gateway, they will show up right here. And all we got to do is just click on the little checkbox to turn it on. And that's going to prompt the setup wizard. And this is really easy. All you guys literally have to do is just click on a button and it's done, right? Connect or create an account. And that is pretty much it. We have pretty much linked Stripe with our account. Now there is one more step that we have to do. We just have to add a webhook. So over here, I'm gonna copy this URL, go to the demo business. And over here, I'll go to developers, webhooks, and I'm gonna add endpoints. I'll paste that URL in here. And this is for tutorial, right? And over here, I'll do the same thing. Add all the events. Then I'll scroll to the bottom. And then I'll click on add an endpoints. I'll show the secret key. And that's pretty much it. All I got to do now is just paste that over here into the edit accounts. So I'm going to paste that in these secrets. And then I'll save the live key. And if you guys get the green check mark, everything is fully connected. So now people can go ahead and purchase the listings on your website via WooCommerce. You guys will have to do the same thing for PayPal and all those other various payment gateways, but that's how you guys can link them both. Now, right here, you guys are gonna see the bank statement. So this is what people are gonna see on their bank statement if they purchased it. So you might wanna make sure that it's like, a, you know, Airbnb website or, you know, whatever is the name of your website, you wanna go ahead and adjust that there because that's what people are gonna see on their bank statements. Okay, so going back over here to Daryl's account, what we're gonna do is we're gonna refresh the page here and I'll click on publish and upgrade. And now I can upgrade this to featured. Okay, and now you'll see that we're brought to this checkout page where we can go ahead and check out via WooCommerce. So this is an alternative method if you guys wanna go this route. So you'll see that we paid for an upgrade. And then right here we have the billing address, payment options, and then they can place the order. And of course, once they purchase this, it will take them right back to their account page. So I'll go ahead and purchase this. All right, I went ahead and I placed the order. So I'm purchasing the featured. And then we have order received. So you'll see right here, we have paid it via Stripe. I paid $1 and I paid for the upgrade for the actual listing. So then I'll click on return to dashboard. And then you'll see it now has the featured icon and this is actually featured now on the website. So you guys can use either way. You guys can use PayPal and Stripe integrated with the theme or you guys can use WooCommerce. You know, they all make money in the end of the day. Okay, and just remember guys, as an admin, you need to make sure that you guys publish this because these are pending right here. So you'll see here how it's pending, not paid, right? And they also paid for featured. So you wanna make sure that you guys do approve these. So quick edit. I'll go ahead and publish this and then I'll update it. All right, so now let's take a look at the website. Okay, so now let's go ahead and imagine that I am in, you know, a visitor for the very first time and I wanna book something in California, right? Here I'll select the check-in checkout date, right? And then I'll click on search. You'll see right away that Daryl's house is listed as number one because we have paid for featured. So that's how you guys can integrate the WooCommerce payment gateway and also how to add the featured to your websites. All right, guys, in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to integrate the Google Maps API. This is helpful if you want the autofill on your search bar. And also it showcases on various parts of your website, like on the map parts and the search results page. So let's go ahead and integrate it. So let's go over here to dashboard. 
and over here, I'll click on map. Hey guys, so in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to integrate the Google Maps API. The Google Maps API is actually really helpful for your search filter. So if people like type in a specific city, what Google will do is that it'll actually uh, bring up neighboring cities to make your search result very accurate. You guys can also use the Google Maps in the search results page if you guys want to showcase the Google Maps. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to integrate Google Maps onto your website. All right, now right here, I'll just select Google Maps and Google Places. And here we need to actually use a Google Maps API key. So right here, there's this link. What we can do is just go ahead and copy this and we can just paste it in the search results. So right here, I'll paste it. Okay, at the top right here, I'll click on get started. Okay, now the first thing you'll do is create a project. So you'll go ahead and create a project. Once you guys do create a project, on the left side, you're gonna see APIs and services. All you gotta do is click on APIs and services, and you're going to enable an API. So you wanna enable the Maps JavaScript API. So make sure that you guys do have this enabled, right? Once you guys do enable this, we can then go ahead and copy and paste the credentials onto the website. So after we do enable this, all you gotta do is go over here to Keys and Credentials. And then at the top, you'll click on Create Credentials. You'll then click on Create an API Key. And here is the API key. So I'll go ahead and copy this. And then we'll just paste this onto the website and we're done. All right, so I'll paste that there and then click on save changes. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and take a look over here. So let's go to visit site. Okay, so right here, I'll go ahead and put in something like, uh, you know, Santa Clarita. Remember how we created a listing in Santa Clarita? You'll see how everything automatically propagates so it fully syncs with the websites to make things really convenient to search for. And then I'll click on search. And of course, you guys will see that it actually pulls the property from Santa Clarita right here. Now I know in the map, it looks a little weird, but that's just because we put it in like the middle of like the ocean for our address, right? So uh, that's why it actually looks like that. But once you put the right address, it'll work just fine. So there it goes, you know, so we have the property in Santa Clarita and you'll see it works perfectly because this property we actually listed in Santa Clarita, California, right? So we know the Google Maps API is working and it's fully integrated with the website. So that's how you guys can use the Google Maps API. If you guys do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Google Maps API is a paid service. However, it does charge you a very little amount to use it. It's like a few pennies, like, you know, per call. So it's not too much, but um, that's how you guys can integrate it. And I do recommend having it because it does make your search results a lot more accurate. All right, party people, thank you guys so much for watching this WordPress tutorial. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. Now, before I made this video, I actually purchased like five or six rental themes, right? And I tested them vigorously. And after using all those themes, I really narrowed it down to this one theme. It has something for everyone, right? It's a very broad based theme with tons of payment uh, integrations. And I think it's a suitable uh, WordPress theme for anyone building any type of rental websites. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. And until then, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.